Hi, I'm Paul Denon. I'm Justin Cohen. I think just about everybody knows who Mr. Beast is, and it turns out on the off hours from his hugely successful video production company, he plays a lot of Dune Imperium. When he reached out to us a couple months ago, we were thrilled to work together on something with him. The result of this collaboration was a Dune Imperium Uprising pre-release invitational. On October 7th, 36 players from the Mr. Beast team, the Direwolf Digital team, and the online Dune Imperium community converged on Raleigh, North Carolina to compete for a total prize purse of $20,000. So today we have coverage of that final table. And amazingly, Jimmy, Mr. Beast Donaldson himself, did so well in the tournament that he made the final table winning three out of four rounds leading into it. So let's head down to the action where Jimmy goes up against three other successful tournament players, Sneaker, Rob Simpson, and you got franked. Let's go to the action. What? Do you want the metal one yeah. for the, well, the oh, maker? Yeah. I'm just going to tell Sneaker that uh, yeah. we get I'm fucked. So the hell fucked. Okay, so we've had our objective cards dealt like out, like like and Rob in the lower left corner is going to be our first player, which means that Sneaker in the lower right will be selecting leader first. Why is there three on top and then four? For this tournament, we used a leader selection method where you deal four leaders to the player in fourth position. They choose one of them, pass the remainder to the person to their right, who adds one random leader to that pile, selects one, and then repeats the process until each player is selected a leader. Yeah, we start with seat four, which you know is generally considered to be the worst position to start in, so they have a little bit of an advantage on selecting uh, their favorite leader. Why is fourth seat considered a worse position? Well, I think it's probably uh, based on just not getting your, your first plays uh, started on getting uh, too influenced towards a faction, for example. I haven't even played yet. So I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? But, uh, you know, you could argue that that first position was not deserving of being last to choose leaders in this case. Uh, I think uh, a lot of players do think that second and third position are potentially the best. It's definitely possible the change between Dune Imperium and Dune Imperium Uprising has uh, shook up the metagame on that score. Absolutely. So I did have a chance to ask uh, the players after the fact about their leader selections. And Sneaker, we can't see his leader yet, but I know that he has chosen Gurney Halleck. Mm. And uh, he told me that of all the leaders that he looked at in this game, Gurney was the only one he had played leading up to this game. Um, wow. And he said... I wonder what the other ones were. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I think we can get a little peek there. It looks like maybe... Uh... I see Jessica. Okay. Jessica is a tough one to play. I think maybe Shaddam was in there? Yeah. Oh no, I was, that was Margo, Margo, which Jimmy just took, not Jessica. That was Margo. So yeah, Sneaker apparently played about 13 games on the first day, the practice day, and he only won one of them. Um, so he had a much better so he's second it up. day. Yeah, I mean, he timed, he timed his uh, momentum well. Hustling. <laughs> Yeah, so we had Jimmy in the top, right? Jimmy just selected Margo. Yeah, and I asked him about that pick as well, and I wondered if Margo was one of his favorite leaders, and he said no. Hmm. Um, so he probably just didn't see any of his favorite leaders, and he said that he picked Margo because he thinks, you know, he's less less likely to make a mistake with her because she's fairly straightforward to play. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, in the top left, we have Frank. Uh, Frank had uh, an excellent uh, tournament leading up to this. I believe he was one of the first players qualified for the uh, elimination rounds. I can believe that because I played with him in round three. We were both 2-0 and going into round three, so I think we were both guaranteed um, spots. And uh, we, we actually both had a rough round three. We came in third and fourth. <laughs> and then I played against him again in round four. And uh, so essentially, he knocked me out of the tournament. Um, very solid player. 
I, I really can't criticize his play at all. Oh, uh, so we've got Rob choosing, and since everyone else is selected, Rob's just choosing his leader face up, and Rob takes Mwadib. I know Rob was pretty high on Mwadib coming into the tournament. Um, yeah, I think that I think I think there was a buzz about Mwadib coming into the mm -hmm. tournament, uh, partly because the the Mr. Beast team um, had some practice beforehand, and they were fairly high on Mwadib, uh, pegging him near the top. We can, we can uh, probably suspect that Mwadib was the one card that got added to his selection. The other players didn't have an option on Mwadib, maybe? Yeah, yeah, probably so. Now, in first position, Mwadib isn't... That, that wouldn't be my favorite place to play Mwadib, because when you play Mwadib, you essentially... Like, he is very straightforward. Right. You, you need to unlock the Fremen, you need to get to Siege Tabor, because you need to get Worms. Otherwise you're not utilizing half of your leader's abilities. Right. And in first position, it's, it's just not guaranteed. Like other players could just, you could get one step up the Fremen track and the other players could could try to prioritize blocking you at every step. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we, we did hear some of that chatter during the tournament because of the buzz around, around Mwadib. There was definitely an amount of awareness uh, from the players that, uh, you know, collectively, there might be a collective action problem at the table to uh, get in Mwadib's way and prevent him from starting to uh, get his engine going too quickly. We have Amber Matwelli, uh was taken by Frank uh, up there in position two on your top left. Yeah, I asked him about that. And I think he said he played her once before in the tournament and thought she was solid. He was... He was looking for some other leaders, though, so it, it seems like kind of nobody got exactly what they wanted, except maybe for Rob. Maybe maybe Mwadib would be his favorite in first position, although I think I asked him, and I think he said he likes Staban Twek in uh, mm. first position. Yeah, I could see that. I'm a, I'm a fan of Staban in general. Amber's uh, troop uh, pushing... Her, 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 her troop ability, I wonder if it's... I could tell myself a story where it's stronger in three-player, where you're more likely to make a relevant impact on, on, the, on the combat one way or another in a three-player game than in a four-player game, but I'm not sure. It's kind of too early to say. We have our first conflict. It is for a, an influence. Oh, wow. That could be big. There's only there's only three skirmishes in the game. This is the only skirmish that offers um, an influence um, with a faction of your choice. Hmm. So if you're aiming for to influence with a particular faction um, to unlock one of the board spaces or uh, prepare the way if you're going Benny Gesserit, winning this combat can be really big. So it looks like Rob has played Seek Allies to Desert Tactics. And unless I'm mistaken, you could be considering what to trash here. It's deploy two troops. Interesting. Because he could have de deployed three troops. Yeah. I thought you were I don't think it's. It's because it's only on blue, so it's like. And he probably wants to win this conflict, right? Because in position one, like we said, Mwadib can be blocked getting to Siege Tabor. So if he can win this conflict with his starting influence with the Fremen, he'll be guaranteed to be able to go to Siege Tabor next round. Oh, wow. Rob elected, not only did he only deploy two troops, he elected not to trash at all with Desert Tactics. That is a very interesting move. Yeah. That is not something that I would personally do. Just because trashing is kind of so much fun, <laughs> you know, on round one, making your deck better, I, I, I wouldn't be able to. He, he must. What do you think? Why do you think he did that? Uh, the, he, the only thing I can imagine is that he just has a very specific plan for every card in his hand. Obviously, he's, he's playing for the, for the conflict, so maybe he's reticent to, to trash some daggers. Uh, maybe he has convincing arguments in his hand, and he's concerned about making a good buy in round one, I know I would be. Um, what do you think about this row? 
Improvement, right? Um, Benny Jesser at Operative on the left. Uh, very strong card. This row actually looks incredibly strong now that, mm -hmm. now that I take a look at it. The second card is Maker Keeper, which is a very strong two cost card. Mm -hmm. The third card is, uh, I can't see the name of it. It's uh, something like Covert. Let me, let me quickly find it. The Maker Keeper is a strong card, but it's not necessarily the strongest right at the beginning of the game. True, true. You, uh, Undercover Asset. Yep. So Undercover Asset is kind of an incredible card to flop early, right? Yes. Because it lets you break the rules on accessing those two influence board spaces. Right, yeah. Undercover Asset lets you ignore influence requirements on board spaces when you use it to send an agent. So um, possibly most notably, Siege Tabor could let you bypass needing to from an influence at all to get to Siege Tabor and get your maker hooks. Yeah. I guess, yeah, so so Rob could have not prioritized going to the Fremen mm -hmm. and planned as the first player with the first buy to buy that card. However, that can, that can backfire if somebody else decides to early reveal. Yeah, it's always possible. So Frank in position two played uh, his signet ring to Arakeen and got into the troops. Also did not deploy the maximum that he could have, like Rob matched him to two troops. And I think I heard Rob say, there goes my plan. So I think Rob was maybe planning on going to Arakeen to back up his forces. Interesting, interesting. But there could also be some gamesmanship going on. Could be. I don't know that Arakeen is a, a space you, you can really be too confident is gonna float around to you in the first round when there's no bonus spice out there and a lot of spaces that nobody has access to. Arakeen is, is on the stronger side. And where did Jimmy play? I think I missed him place his agent, but he's clearly in the, oh, he played to Fremkit. Ah, yes, Jimmy took the other Fremen location. Which is uh, wise, obviously, right? You can't let Rob get away with both. Right, he's making making Rob earn his uh, second Fremen influence uh, in the case that he does have his, uh, his diplomacy in his hand as well. Uh, and, and Jimmy limped into the to the conflict with just one troop. It's a little bit interesting to see the two players in the early positions be into the con commit to the conflict so much. Often you see players in in uh, early positions, at least on their first time around, right. be, try to try to wait before they commit and see what the uh, players behind them are going to do a little bit. Right. There's something a little subtle going on too whenever Gurney's in the game in fourth position mm. because Gurney sometimes has an incentive to go strong into an early combat. If he gets at least six strength in the combat, he gets an extra persuasion to buy. So you never know when Gurney might just pop in with a bunch of troops, although he did just play his signet ring off Arrakis um, up to accept a contract. So he, he kind of took away his trump card there. Yeah, I know when I'm playing Gurney, I can hardly resist sitting, trying to get six strength in every single combat. I just want that extra persuasion. It feels yeah. so impactful. And back to the row, like, part of why this row is so strong and so interesting is it looks like Stilgar is up there, six cost card. Arguably one of the strongest cards in the yeah, no, deck. I don't want to compete. But literally none of us would have. Yeah. <laughs> My second game yesterday, I had. Fifth and the fifth second. fifth card there is uh, Calculus of Power, another really strong card because it trashes. Right. Yeah, Stilgar actually got got stronger a, a bit late in development, if I if I remember correctly. You have a better memory than me. <laughs> How did we buff him? I believe. Uh, Stilgar cost seven for, for quite a bit of development, oh, and oh, wow. uh, and uh, there was uh, yeah, it just was sort of clearly kind of behind, um, kind of behind the other seven uh, that we had, and uh, okay. And then we, we, I think we did some juggling, and we we put Interstellar Trade to seven, yeah, and made that card uh, a little better. So Stilgar is for sure not weak. Oh. All right, Rob, okay, now Rob is fully coming into the conflict. Got another two troops in by going to... I'm not seeing his agent. It's tough to see the yeah, his Yeah, those are... They are tough to see. Yeah, I think, oh, it's Spice Refinery. It's on Spice Refinery. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, 
I don't. See, yeah, because he's got the Solari there. Just got the two Solari because obviously he didn't have the doesn't have the spice yet to make a. You know, I often have a have a hard time convincing myself to make that that very early spice refinery play without a spice. It's a little action inefficient. Right. Obviously, Rob is looking was looking to get more into the conflict. Right. He didn't ha really have better options. Yeah, like he said, I think his plan was blocked. He was probably planning to go to Arakeen. I wonder if he didn't trash because he was maybe going for Stilgar? Like if he was, because with you know, Mwadib's Signet, he draws a card. If he plays to Arakeen, he's drawing two cards. He could have burst his persuasion up and grabbed uh, you know, Stilgar. Very powerful opening move. Yeah, not super high percentage, I don't think, if you're counting on that Arakeen draw on your second agent. True. Um, contested verbs. But high leverage if you hit it for sure. He gets friendship. He gets friendship. It's round one would be famine access. I don't know. I think we can. The players right now are, are kind of talking about the the, the Muad'Dib of it all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's not much they can do at this point, right? Like oh, four well, actually, four troops wins. in for Muad'Dib. Yeah. I mean, what are they, what are they yeah, going to do? Uh, yeah, somebody would have to. Well, one, make a very aggressive move, and two, probably also either get luck. Like, e even that wouldn't be guaranteed to work. They would need right. to have the right hand, potentially with daggers. Uh, like this. So somebody would have to potentially put themselves out quite a bit to try to stop Rob and wouldn't even necessarily get paid off for it. Yeah, Rob putting four troops in could be a sign that he has no daggers and he's just like scaring people off. Hmm. But if you call that bluff and come in with four troops and one dagger and then he has one or two daggers, like that's a lot to pay. And even if he doesn't, that isn't necessarily what you wanted to do with your troops in round one. You you may help you may hurt Rob and help the table, but you may be helping the other two players more than yourself. Exactly. True to the regular Dune Imperium, Uprising continues the process of starting with a Conflict 1 card, a skirmish that is the lowest stakes of all of the Conflict cards. So, and then we'll go into Conflict 2 starting next round. So you're right, like conserving those troops and getting ready for bigger stakes is usually what you want to do. Yeah, in principle lower stakes, but it is, it is very interesting when sometimes, and I think it is most often the influence up Skirmishes. I, I think we saw that in days. Rise of Ix, oh, where yeah. that so influence so could so translate into a very early down. interstellar yeah. shipping yeah. access, yeah. which was generally yeah. very powerful. Yeah. And so that could make the, the round one conflict yeah. actually very competitive. Um, and I think we see, we see a little of that here with, uh, with Muad'Dib hunting for his, his maker hooks. Frank is Frank is asking if he needs worms. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> it's hard to turn them down. You have an opening for them. I know he has no cares and he can be blocked the worms. Yeah, so that uh, undercover asset that uh, is just on there on the row. So a player, kind of any player who, who didn't even necessarily take any any from an influence. I guess the players who didn't take any from from an influence might be the most interested in trying to grab that up. Right. Because um, that's sort of the the second level of if you're trying to counterpoint Mwadib, first slow down his access, but then second, you definitely don't want him to be the only one with access once once we get to that part. You want pe some other people to be able to, to take those worm slots from away from him time to time. Agreed. It looks like Frank did back down. I think Frank made the wise move. He didn't want to waste having uh, diplomacy. Mm. Move, so he went to deliver supplies and took a influence with the guild and the water. Yeah, hard to turn down using your diplomacy uh, if you can justify it at all in the early game. I need a, I don't know about you, but I need a really compelling reason to convince me to uh, reveal that card. Yeah, and it might have been Seek Allies, actually. I'm not seeing diplomacy in front of him, so he probably trashed Seek Allies to make that move. Oh, and look at that. Sneaker took Stilgar. Oh, did he early reveal for, to take Stilgar? I believe that was an early reveal from fourth position yeah. to grab up the Stilgar. Yeah, I mean, I guess he, he was hoping when he made that move up to accept contract, drawing a card, he was probably hoping to draw a particular, you know, maybe a convincing argument. Yeah, I wonder if, yeah, and Eric King got taken right before he made that move. I wonder if that was also, if he was, like, going to try to draw a card um, one way or another. And, uh, 
Yeah, it looks like that that, that that looks like a pretty significant payoff. Now, sometimes early revealing in fourth position can be a, sometimes be a little bit extra costly in some ways because kind of like what we were talking about earlier, if you're in fourth position, you had position in the conflict. So you can often, even if you can't or don't want to win the conflict, you can position yourself to get an efficient finish because you have a lot of the information. Uh, definitely in a situation where, uh, you know, multiple multiple players had, like every player had troops in by the time it got to him in the first round. So uh, that makes it... Uh, and then by the second time around, obviously Rob was in heavy, so I think it made sense. See if it works out for him. So I saw Frank take uh, Maker Keepers. Mm, the early Maker Keepers. He Without? Like he, only took, he only had two Persuasion, so nobody has taken Benny Jessard Operative among the first two players. That's a very strong card, and it only costs three. Oh, but did Jimmy take uh, Undercover Asset? Is that where that went? Oh no, I think Rob took, probably Rob. I think yeah. Rob actually ended up with the undercover asset anyway after all of that. And essentially, so, so I think Jimmy just uh, got a really good card for being in third position. He got uh, Benny Jesser at operative. Yeah. Rob is on, if I'm not mistaken, nine strength, which means he did have a dagger in his hand. So, yeah, that was an active choice not to trash that dagger. Um, I mean, who knows, maybe players would have would have behaved differently had he done that, but from where I'm sitting, the way things worked out, I think he would be a lot happier at this point if he had trashed that dagger. Oh man, the big Agreed. brain play would have been... And uh, Chani has now flopped on the row. And I uh, the first sneaker I gets Stilgar and Chani. That could be game over for, <laughs> for the rest of the table. Just yeah. Draw. Yeah. Draw, draw. Uh, uh, not just for lore reasons, uh, but yeah, mechanically, those cards work pretty well together. Stilgar keeps up the flow of troops, and then Chani kind of doubles down on that and makes it so that as long as you have any troops, You'll kind of keep having troops because you don't even won't even need to spend all of them to to, to leverage them. Yeah, they're both very flexible too. I mean, Shawnee's kind of almost she's always about getting troops in. She's always about getting three troops in mm -hmm. specifically. Stillgar though is very flexible, right? Like, yeah, Sneaker could use Stillgar to, to push a lot of troops in, but if he gets a lot of Fremen cards and can do big reveals for lots of persuasion, he could buy Spice Must Flows for days. Mm -hmm. So we got bonus spice on every harvest space. Nobody, nobody played to one in round one. Uh, the first player marker has moves and it is on Frank. Um, no we should probably talk, by the way, about the objective cards and the fact that uh, and how you you match the icons. Definitely, definitely. So those were dealt out. Everyone was dealt out one to start with, and one of them uh, indicates who starts with the first player marker. Uh, so Rob got that. Got that desert mouse, and then players will always start. There will always be two desert, desert mices, desert mouses, and two Chris knives. Uh, and the first conflict was a ornithopter, so that was not a potential match for any player. But when you get uh, each conflict has one of the uh, three combat, I one of those three combat icons on it, and anytime you're able to collect two matching icons, you can flip those down, and that's a VP. Wow, this uh, opening move for Frank in uh, <coughs> round two, he went back to deliver supplies, upping his water to three, and unlocking um, the guild space, uh, the shipping space in the top right corner of the board. And very notably, immediately withdrew his, redrew his diplomacy to be able to play that well, he might have used Seek Ally as the first round. I, ah. I, I, I said I say sometimes say diplomacy okay. as an open-ended. Sure, term. sure, sure. Well, if he did, that was very fortunate. Uh, it does have a reshuffled deck right now, so indeed must have drawn a card at some point. I'm not sure. Did he play to Eric King last round? Was um, he the Eric King player? Frank? Frank was the one who played to Eric King. So there you go. So he did reshuffle. So that might have been a redrawn diplomacy. I guess we'll see if his uh, Seek Allies ever comes out. Gurney finally enters the fray. Chooses to do so at Frimkit. Uh, so he can only get two troops in, which won't 
which might not yet be enough to trigger his uh, plus one persuasion ability, unless he has, uh, although given that he revealed for six persuasion last round, I think maybe he does have to have both of his daggers right now. Perhaps. Looks like Fra uh, Rob has immediately uh, gone to Siege Tabor, gotten his maker hooks. He has a water now. Make no mistake. <laughs> and Frank immediately blocks him at Hecka Basin. Yeah, not letting him get the, uh, and, uh, yeah, so, smart. I mean, Frank had perfectly valid reasons to want to uh, harvest some spice anyway, but obviously the extra value there preventing Rob from getting an early worm. It looks like uh, Frank has, yeah, they're pointing it out now. This would have been kind of a, uh, a wild conflict to get double rewards on for either first or second place, honestly. Oh, yeah. Double trash, double water, potentially double contract. That yeah. is a crazy good start. Yeah, I mean, the ceiling for Muad'Dib is really high. Um, fortunately for the other players at the table, if they're aware of what Muad'Dib can do, they can block him as and, as Frank did. And these players, having uh, you know just uh, succeeded their way through a through a tournament of, of quite strong players, uh, definitely have have a decent idea what's going on. Did you see that intrigue card that uh, Jimmy flashed at the camera? I didn't. What? I think it was the uh, spend a solari to take an influence with uh, Emperor or Spacing Guild, yep. but uh, it was a quick flash, and I'm not. Not 100% sure. Emperor or Spacing Guild, so that could allow him to sneak some, some access to shipping, uh, potentially convert that surprise influence into another surprise influence, and changing sort of the order on Swordmaster access. Sneaker's <laughs> thinking right now. I do... If we're right about Sneaker having had no daggers in, it in his first hand, that's sort of, uh, I would say, doubly lucky for him. I have noticed that Gurney, it's a real advantage to group your daggers when you're Gurney sure. and not, you know, that saves you from putting in one troop uh, to be able to, to, be able to tr still trigger the ability rather than sort of getting a kind of inefficient distribution of them. Sure. Do you think he's just going to concede this to uh, Jimmy? I'm not Jimmy's got three troops in right now. Yeah, I'm really not sure. Uh, he, it, I mean, this is a, it could still be worth playing for this conflict, uh, but having the two daggers, I would say, somewhat relieves the pressure on him from needing to do so. Do you know what location his contract is for? Can you see? I know it's for water. Um, it could be for Arakeen. Mm. But it is very hard to see on our monitor. It's possible that the viewers will be able to see <laughs> the game even better than we are as we are casting it. Uh, look at all of those resources Frank has. What round is this? Round two? <laughs> yeah, he's gone to deliver supplies twice. He got bonus spice at Haga Basin. Finished in the conflict. Finished in the in first conflict. He's going to take some rewards in this conflict. Yeah, very, very uh, active start. But if Sneaker does have two daggers, Frank's maybe uh, destined for third place here, but the Lady Amber special ability could work to his favor, right? He could retreat one of his troops, retreat to only have to pay one troop to take third place. Ah, look at this. Sneaker has elected to do a oh. double Fremen round. Wow. So may have eyes on Worms himself is also electing to play for this conflict, which probably makes sense, again, given the, the double daggers in his hand. You want to be able to, to leverage those if you can. Uh, he's going to be in second position next round. Nobody's going to be in a position to prevent him from getting into Siege Tabor if he wants that. Yeah. He's probably afraid of Jimmy's Intrigue card being a combat card. Because if he has double daggers and he pushed in four troops, that's putting him at 10 strength and Jimmy's showing six. Um, so he's probably protecting against like a plus three. It's very conservative. There's not a ton of combat intrigues that can do that. And, you know, obviously those are, pr those are 
relatively powerful. Expending one this early uh, definitely cuts into your value even if you do win the conflict. But um, OK, so Sneaker ultimately does choose to trash to the uh, desert tactics, uh, contrary to, to Rob's play round one. Um, uh, no, oh, he tossed a dagger. He took change. Wow. Mind. Well, if you, I will say that that is a thing that makes the fourth troop push make more sense too. If you need, sure. if you want to be able to trash that dagger, then you you probably do need to push that fourth troop. You replace your power. Dagger, I need to decide. This also, unless I'm mistaken, is a desert mouse uh, conflict. So. This would complete uh, match with a sneaker's VP or uh, objective card to be worth a, a VP in addition to the other rewards. Yeah, and you win a contract. Uh, you get to take a contract if you win this conflict. Mm -hmm. And there's currently looks to be uh, espionage for three Solari contract up there, which is one of the better ones to pick up early in the game. Sure. Yeah, espionage and high council looks like the other one to me. Yeah. Doesn't have actually the resources for either one of those right now, but that's a, it's early. That's a temporary problem. Uh, if he does, well, it's almost certain he's going to get at least second in this conflict, which will mean a, a second trash as oh, of did, round two. Did Frank just buy uh, Corinth City? That is that is a power card as well. Yeah, I had two convincing arguments among whatever else in his hand. <coughs> Oh, Shishakli just flopped, and Jimmy has four. I would be tempted to get Shishakli, even even if I don't have Fremen going. Because Shishakli is just such a nice, versatile card. You can trash a card to draw a card if you play it. Wow, this early on, that kind of getting that kind of flow and deck fixing going seems like it could be really, could be really potent. And there's not another, another starter card coordination as the other four on the row. Yeah, because you get a Which is a fun card as well. Wow, those are both good. But if you pass Shishakli, you pass it to the person with potentially Stilgar. with Stillguard. Oh my god. Oh, Strike Fleet just flopped. If you're, if you're betting money, <laughs> bet on that got a crowd reaction. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy just said, if you're betting money, bet on sneaker. Oh, holy. I was just listening to him. Uh, but Nobody paid attention down. to what I was doing. Uh, what's that? You got bailed out. But, yeah, you got bailed well, out. Well, now just my decision. So. Uh, Jimmy didn't say who he's, he's betting on. Right. <laughs> Nobody paid any attention to what I was doing or something? You have four, there's only one I mean, it worked And he out. does get Shishakli with Stilgar. Yeah, uh, so Jimmy took the Sardi card coordination, and Sneaker took the Shishakli. Um, why would we put the cards on top? Man, oh, another missive? Oh, it looks like Unswerving Loyalty just flopped, which is another a strong Fremen combat card, really strong for Stilgar. Yeah, that's definitely a card I heard players talking about, and I think a lot of them sort of came up on their opinion over the weekend as the weekend went on. I think there's some uh, sort of inherent reticence towards some of the, towards low cost cards among some of the players. Uh, there's definitely a perception that some of the one-cost cards in base Dune Imperium are, are a little underpowered, uh, but I think players started to uh, come to the position that uh, this was this was not one of those. Um, Look how close this combat was, by the way. With sneak, Sneaker trash that dagger, he, mm -hmm. prob he probably tracked what Jimmy had used in the first round and knew that Jimmy was only going to be uh, at seven strength. Fairly safe to say. Um, couldn't have beaten a combat entry, but no. I think it was reasonable to put yourself in that position. Only one, he, Jimmy only had the one entry card. Yep. Um, and this certainly makes that dagger trash looks very smart, particularly if I, I'm guessing that Sneaker did have exactly four and not five. I think if he had five, he probably would have gotten Strike Fleet. So if he had Trash Dune, like he had been originally considering, he would have had a dagger that wouldn't have helped at all in this combat and not been able to buy Shishakli. He definitely had to buy something that would not have been as good for him. So now, good, good can call Rob there. actually buy Strike Fleet right here? I think he has the ability to, to get oh, Strike Fleet. It at? looks I like he's revealed a lot of persuasion. I'm seeing five persuasion in his reveal along with the undercover asset, which presumably in this position is going to be for a spy. That spy is... Uh, he's picking up... He's. He's picking up Strike Fleet as if he's considering it strongly, but maybe he's considering Chani as well. 
Yeah, that spy from Undercover Asset is... Uh, oh, he has six? He's buying... Oh, he's buying Chani and Unswerving. How does he have six? Yes, I am. I'll, I'll just assume that the, the people who can see okay, the game better... Okay. I'm making sure that he's playing by the rules. I, did, I only saw five, but um, yeah, I, I could have missed something. We should say that Justin, uh, my co-commentator here, was at the table judging this game, so I think you can trust yourself. Judging very severely. Yeah, you know, I, I certainly was doing my best, but there's a lot going on in a, in a game of uh, a Dune Imperium. It's definitely possible for, uh, even for a whole table, to miss something. So Sneaker did take the uh, ooh, uh, Sneaker did take the espionage contract, yeah. and Jimmy just flashed his hand, and it looked like Benny Jesser at operative was in his hand, and he did get a spice in that round. He got maybe two spice, so he has the ability to send Benny Jesser at operative to the Benny Jesser at space. He'll probably send it to espionage. Now, did I'm not seeing another trashed card from Sneaker. From the oh, here we go. He was deciding. I think he's last I, to figure yes, out his I, rewards. I thought that was his new hand, but it's his old discard pile. Yeah. He's still deciding. He's not <laughs> sure. Looks like reconnaissance he decided to trash. Yeah, reconnaissance rather than his doing the desert planet. Uh, it's, a, it's a fair choice. So what, what do you think of Sneaker's position here? Like He doesn't have any resources to speak of. He just has one water. Um, he has two contracts. He has good cards. Is he in a good position here relative to the rest of the table? I would say that, I mean, yeah, he's also moving into position. He's in second position now. He'll be in first position next round. Sure. And uh, I guess he matched he matched battle accounts there, so he's actually ahead. Sure. Um, and, uh, yeah, so being this early position will give him good control over being able to complete those contracts. Definitely will want to be looking to improve his resource situation as soon as possible. The contracts can help with that. Uh, doesn't look like, uh, you know, bonus spice is going to be an option in the near term. Currently only available on Deep Desert, and Frank already has enough water for that, and Jimmy's only one away, so that's it's going to be, Sneaker would be hard-pressed to find his way into that spice. Put him down there, I don't mind reaching, I guess. Yeah, no. So Jimmy is first position, reconnaissance to spice refinery. So He's got him, a big stack of solar right now. Right? I see is, it. Is, is it eight? Is it, is it eight? That's the question. Um, it's definitely at least seven from what I can see. So high council is an option for him if it's not eight. Um, and interestingly, if it isn't eight, He's gonna before he's gonna have the ability to have eight and go to the swordmaster. He's gonna be out of position. So if it's not eight, he could wind him, find himself very back, back pretty far in the queue on, on actually getting swordmaster. Right. Well, he, he's certainly shown himself over the course of this weekend to be a strong player. So my guess is he's got eight solar and he's he's going to play the swordmaster. Mm. He actually won three of his games out of the four rounds leading up to this finals, okay. wow. one, one of which was with Lady Margot. Mm. So maybe he's, he's just trying to get us all to sleep on Margot, make sure he can, he can always pick it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe he knows. I didn't get a sense that he was uh, toying with me when he, mm. when he, when he uh, gave me his answer. Well, you wouldn't. <laughs> True. <laughs> Just. Uh, and that's a Stilgar play. Oh, to where? Uh, Fremkit? Yeah. Stilgar is also a really good reason for if, if, if you needed another one for Sneaker to have come into that conflict so heavily. Uh, when you have a, a powerful troop generating card, uh, one of the a failure mode you want to be careful about is just not playing actively enough for conflicts. There's a kind of, I think, an adjustment you need to make where you become kind of more, more feisty and even conflicts where the rewards aren't necessarily something you might have been as interested in before. Once you have enough troop generation in your deck, that kind of 
sort of implicitly lowers the value of all your troops, which means you want to be freer in trading them for resources lest they start to stack up and you find yourself unable to leverage your, your pile of troops. Makes sense. It's interesting how deep you can go sometimes uh, with your analysis. Uh, glad to have you on the development team. <laughs> And now, it's interesting here, because Sneaker has essentially taken the lead on the Fremen track, and has he didn't go to, to Siege Tabor, and he could have. He just basically chose to take another influence with the Fremen. Is Rob going to block him at Siege Tabor? Like, you have to think at this point that, that, that Gurney does want worms. He has access to Siege Tabor. Yeah, Rob's the only one who can. Oh, we we, we kind of missed it, but Rob had a uh, got a spy from his reveal in the last round. Dropped that right on Haga Basin. Oh, nice. He is uh, not interested in being blocked on his further worm activities like happened last round. Uh, Rob has noticed that Frank has deep desert quantities of water. <laughs> Definitely a good thing to be aware of. Do you think Frank will pull the trigger this round on uh, Deep Desert? Uh, you know, it's interesting. He doesn't need to in the sense that no other player has a clear path to beat him to it. Even if he allows bonus spice to accrue for another round, there isn't water available in for this conflict and the person who's competing with him on water best jimmy is going to be completely out of position right however you know there's always a question of okay you could get more maybe be a little bit more action efficient next round but do you need that spice now could right. you could you leverage that now and produce something and speaking of haga basin by the way uh, rob did just take his first move and summoned a worm at haga basin did not choose to recall his spy to gather intelligence, which yeah. makes sense. He's going to just park it there as long as he can. Yeah, it's interesting. So there's an interesting choice there where you can allow the spy, you can use the existence of your spy to allow you to make a different move first. Now you can't be blocked there. You can do maybe a, a higher priority move or a different priority move first that might otherwise be blocked the next time it comes around and then no, you'll be able to get your worm anyway next round. But it seems like Rob might be thinking about long-term worm access. He, even though he has a spy there and he can use it to get the worm, he doesn't want to have to spend it to get the worm. He wants to be able to take that worm, quote unquote, for free when he can and just use a spy when he needs to. He wants to be going worms all day. Mm -hmm. And uh, Frank went to Arakeen and pushed three troops. So this is quite a combat right now. There's a worm <laughs> for one player and uh, three troops for two other players. And now I think we're going to find out whether uh, Jimmy does have eight Solari and uh, a Landsrat icon in his hand. This would be the moment. This is, for what it's worth, a looks like another desert mouse conflict. So uh, Rob is the only person who'd be matching an icon on this particular conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, I said Rob's first conflict win was an ornithopter, and it might have been, but it might also be a Chris knife. I can't actually tell. Yeah, we apologize to the viewers, but uh, it is very hard to see the, the, the especially the small format cards oh. from our camera. And there goes the Swordmaster. That pile of Solari is gone. What do you know? It yep. was exactly eight. Yep. Wow. What are the odds? And uh, for those who don't know, in Dune Imperium Uprising, the Swordmaster rules are slightly changed. The first player pays eight Solari to get their Swordmaster, but then essentially lowers the price for all the other players at the table to six Solari. Interesting to notice that none of the other players seem to actually have very much Solari. I'm seeing zero, I'm seeing two, maybe another two for Rob. Right. Um, you know, that's only one spice refinery visit away, but the spice refinery is currently blocked. Yep, and there's no Solari at stake for this conflict. It looks like spice, water, and maybe something else? No, just spice and water and a troop. troop. Sneaker does have multiple contracts that could give him access to Solari. 
So that could help. Yeah, it looks like one of his contracts is for the research station, which gets, it's one of my favorite contracts. It gets you two Solari and placing a spy. Mm. Um, so if he can complete his other contract to get a water, then he'll be eligible to pay the cost of the research station. Now, is that your favorite contract because of two Solari and a spy, or is it your favorite contract because you just get to go to the research station? Get to go to the research station. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the new research station is that this is a pretty pretty interesting board space. Uh, in original Dune Imperium, this was draw three, very very potent, uh, very powerful, but kind of did one thing, one direction. This new research station is, I don't I don't think it's any weaker, but it's kind of diversified where its power lies. You can sort of play it and and fill your hand and maybe make set up a big buy while also playing to the conflict. Pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, it became good throughout the whole game now, whereas the old research station was generally spurned in the early game mm. and only kind of came online in the mid game. Sure. Although we should say we're in round three and nobody has gone to the research station in this game, so it's yeah. possible that it will go until the mid game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> think uh, Mwadi being in the game has some impact on that. They really have kind of no choice but to go worms, and that sort of puts a uh, sort of subtle increased pressure on water for the table because you need a certain amount of water upkeep to be able to continually go worms. So you sort of expect there to be the water that exists at the table to be a little bit more competed for and harder to get. Uh, we, I think we saw Deliver Supplies visited in each of the first two rounds. See Chaber visited in the second round. Uh, no uh, gather support action, which kind of, I think, tends to be sort of the, re the release valve, if you'll forgive the pun, for, for water access. Um, and Rob basically just, you know, hunted on this combat. He's, he's happy to just let his worm double third place. Uh, as he went to uh, the Spacing Guild. And it looks like Frank was content with letting the spice on Deep Desert ride. And as you were talking about, yeah. Trying to pick up even even more, an even more action efficient play on the next round. Um, did Jimmy go to uh, Espionage? Looks like he did, uh, which uh, in addition to moving him towards uh, his leader ability, which will give him two spice once he gets up to that second Betty Jester influence, blocks uh, Sneaker's contract. Yeah, the card he played, Betty Jester at Operative, is so strong. It's the kind of card that the rest of the table should arguably be aware of, and when they have a good opportunity to go to uh, Espionage, they should consider going there just to stop Jimmy from going there and placing two spies. Hmm. Uh, Sneaker. Sneaker just bought uh, Strike Fleet, it looks like. So that's a strong card. I mean, Sneaker's got a really strong deck at this point. He's got Stilgar, Shashakli. I guess Strike Fleet doesn't really play into Stilgar other than, you know, overwhelming force. Being able to <laughs> just, like, generate tons of troops in a round. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely... Pushes you. It definitely pushes him and Rob kind of at each other. It puts them in a position where, for both of them to sort of validate what they've got going on in their engines, they need to be competing hard in the conflicts. Uh, Rob does have wow. position on Sneaker. Oh, his Guild Spy just flopped. So Rob bought Calculus of Power, which is a nice card. Trashes, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's an Emperor combo card. But he just flopped Guild Spy, which only costs three, lets you place a spy when you buy it, and if you are set up to do spice must flows and you can place like multiple spies on the faction tracks, it's it's a it's one of the most powerful cards in the game. Uh, and notably, Rob does have an Emperor card in his deck, uh, that undercover asset that he took in round oh, one. Oh, right. Um, so he ar already has the potential to, to leverage that calculus of power, should he draw his cards in a uh, fortuitous order. Another Fremen card just flopped. Looks like two more Fremen cards. We've got a Mala Pistol and Desert Survival up there. It's also Truth Trance, the uh, rich man's diplomacy. Sure. 
I don't believe we've seen any Benny Jesser combo card swap yet, right? So this no. is this is going to be probably a very light Benny Jesser combo game. No, we have seen Emperor. We have seen we see space time folding on the row, a spacing guild combo card. That's part of the fun of Dune Imperium, I, I think, is kind of adjusting your game and playing to the options that uh, are available to you. Mm. So hey, this game Benny Jesser combos aren't really available. You you find something else. Yeah. Got to be adaptable. Definitely can't just do one thing every game and, and expect to come out on top, at least not when you're playing against uh, players of this caliber. Right. Sneakers, uh, by the way, pretty famous for table talking uh, yeah. with, with his online group. Mm. And, and uh, you can kind of hear him uh, table talking now about, you know, maybe talking about who's in the best position. Um, when you have that kind of reputation, though, I, I think you have to have also a reputation of being honest about it, right? Like, you can't, you, you'd quickly, be, you know, fingers would be pointed at you if you were always lying all the time. Indeed. So, Frank had two daggers to bump his uh, strength up to eight there, but Seeker's actually on nine. Not wow. sure, not sure, must have had a... Uh, not sure what he revealed oh, but, but to manage Frank, that. Frank's but. pulling out a combat card here, uh, plus three, which explains why he didn't retreat a troop. Wow. He was planning on coming over the top of Sneaker. Uh, no, 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 still no. So I'll take a bump. You get a bump, you get a water. Oh. Right back. I get four spice. And by the way, um, as they're taking rewards here for this uh, conflict, we should mention that both Frank and Sneaker are part of uh, an online community of players, um, and they are kind of the, the European contingent at this final table, whereas Rob and Jimmy are the Mr. Beast and Buddies contingent. Mm. Um, the Mr. Beast team did have access to the game uh, uprising before the rest of the folks, but the rest of the folks came in and practiced a ton on the first day. Um, yep. Sneaker said said something about how he played about 13 games on the first day. He only won one, <laughs> uh, so he certainly got his practice in. There were many games going on uh, at once, and I know at least some of those players were up until 3 a.m. or later. Yeah, uh, t tournament notwithstanding, uh, trying to get their reps in or just enjoying the game, as the case may be. Yeah, this this game is Sunday morning. After the semifinals, I heard Jimmy say something like, oh, I just want to run back the finals tonight because I don't know that I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. So I wonder if he did get uh, any good sleep. And Rob, you know, as one of the organizers of the event, he ha has like boundless energy, but I wonder if it's, you know, coming back now, like multiple days into the event, he's been staying up really late, helping uh, answer questions, help people. Yeah, Rob was was a big help in uh, in uh, managing this tournament as it was going on. So interesting stuff here. Uh, Frank, we can all guess has some deep desert plans this round. Um, a per he's also by far in the best position to potentially get a uh, convert a VP out of this conflict. This is one of the round two conflicts that. Takes a resource conversion to get the v to get a VP, which, depending on exactly when it comes up and exactly in your position, can be pretty nice or can be you know definitely not what you want to do. Sometimes that can be, you know, it's more important to get your engine going or to be making progress towards your sword master, right? Which uh, currently only Jimmy has. By the way, I, I think. Sneaker just played to Siege Tabor, but he has not placed a Maker Hook on his garrison, so hopefully the, the players will catch that and fix it soon. Or blow the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second. To... So, so Justin was joking there. So when you go to Siege Tabor, you do have an option of grabbing your Maker Hooks and a troop and a water, or foregoing that option and just taking a water and uh, blowing up the shield wall. Uh, it's a joke because you you certainly would not do that in this situation because you'd just be helping Rob. Yeah, blowing up the wall before you get your Maker Hooks is fairly suspect. I'll 
I don't think we've seen any walled conflicts yet, have no, we? Not yet. That's uh, an interesting aspect of the sort of the worm game of uh, uprising is that you gotta. There's some variance in how well or how easily you'll be able to leverage your worms, even if you do get access, um, because if the certain conflicts come up. Uh, you won't be able to use your worms unless you spend some extra effort to do so, either going to Siege Tabor again to blow the yeah. wall or... Yeah, you really want to find an Intrigue card that does it so that you can both not have to spend that energy and time it so that the other players don't even see it coming. Yeah. Um, Rob's got to be thinking about taking Haga Basin again right here just because Sneaker just unlocked worms, right? Yeah, so Rob took that guild spy last round. That could be one to keep an eye on. Put it no, on, Frank took it. Or, sorry, Frank took it. And put it uh, put a spy on Spacing Guild. So might be looking to set up at some point getting another spy on, on a faction space and, and setting up a, a powerful reveal turn right by the spice most flow and jumps up on a couple of influence tracks. So Rob does go to Haga Basin. Yeah, this is blocking Sneaker. Uh, no, uh, with Sneaker having... Sneaker was first... I don't see the first player marker, but I think Sneaker was first position this round. I should have been. Uh, yeah, I also don't see it. It might be off camera. And, uh, yeah, went to Siege Tabor. Got, did, does have his hooks now. And pushed him through the conflict, so making no bones about it. Planning to, planning to play for this one. This is a really interesting conflict. It's the one where the winner can spend three spice for a point. Mm -hmm. And if you have a worm in the conflict, that means you can do that twice. So if you have six spice on hand, you could earn two points just from that. Yeah, yeah we talked about how even the three spice for a point, which is, on average, a great value. Like, that's a good, that's a good exchange rate for, for a point with no other action. Uh, it's still earlier in the game, that is, can be less true. It's not necessarily what you want to do. I would say that doubling that in the in the only on round four, as the yeah. case may be, is is a tall order. Yeah, when this conflict comes up in round six, that's where mm -hmm. the game can be shortened essentially because somebody can just kind of run away with it if they can get away with a worm win. Yeah, and yeah, as you mentioned, Rob did right. go to Haga Basin at his first opportunity. Again, twofold blocking sneaker and also preventing himself from having to spend his spy going there later on. Rob con continues to seem to place the highest priority on worms, not just this round, but going forward, making sure he's always going to be in position to be able to get them. I don't know if there was some gamesmanship just going on there, but Jimmy was just kind of taunting Frank uh, <laughs> to go to Deep Desert saying, like, if you don't go there, I, you know, I won't believe it. Like, it's just common sense to go there. And so Frank did go there, and then Jimmy again played Benny Jesser at Operative to Espionage. And, uh, like I said, one of the strongest plays you can make. And I wonder if Frank was considering blocking him. Well, Sneaker has three water now. Oh, so right. So Frank, Frank uh, would have been taking an kind of an incredible risk. Oh, you're right. Plus, not, not to mention, uh, Sneaker would have been able to put two worms in gathered the bonus spice to at least get one point with that three spice. Yeah, if, if, assuming Sneaker had, had the triangle there, which I think you really can't afford to bet against, no. uh, that would have been a, a, a coup for him. Uh, you definitely can't allow that. So I think Frank made the right call. Which probably goes back to why Sneaker trashed his reconnaissance and not a Dune the Desert Planet. He saw that mm. sandworms were in his future and he wanted to maximize the chance of having a triangle. Very interesting. So Sneaker also goes to Benny Gesserit. But again, I, I do think Jimmy is gaining value by being able to play the operative to espionage twice. Uh, because, you know, you place two spies, you're drawing extra cards because you're able to recall your spies for gathering intelligence. Yeah, it looks like Jimmy has spies on both Benny Gesserit and Emperor. I wonder if part of that calculus is thinking about Frank's guild spy and wanting to uh, soak up those spaces to prevent uh, too, too huge a swing on a, on a guild spy reveal. I'm sure it is. Uh, if anybody knows the strength of, of uh, guild spy, it's Jimmy. Uh, he was uh, telling people 
about how he won in five rounds with a, a strong guild spy game where he wow. got it early, bought spice must flows, had you know he even got a worm and kind of doubled his his rewards at one point. Five rounds is incredibly fast. Certainly the earliest I've ever seen or heard of in a real game. Very impressive. Looks like Sneaker's got some uh, some caffeine. <laughs> Jimmy calling him out on performance and <laughs> drugs. I like it. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> Not wrong. So the first, it looks like Jimmy still has the first player marker, but I don't think he is the first player. Oh, yes. I think you're right. I think they just haven't moved it, but I believe they're, they're playing correctly. Yeah, because this is round four. Mm. And, uh, and Rob was first. Was in the fourth seat. The judge should really get on that. Yes. What is the judge doing? I'd love to know what intrigue cards people have, but I guess that's part of the fun for us casters even to, mm -hmm. to wonder. Yeah, I mean, we, can, we should be able to infer based on everything that's going on. So Rob visits, uh, visits Spice Refinery and now has enough Solari to get a Swordmaster. It looks like Frank does as well. But Rob will be going first next round. So, so he'll have to decide if he's going to not go to Hago Basin when he has the opportunity for the first time. Well, if you had a choice, not knowing anything else about what's going to happen next round, would you take Swordmaster or something else? I would take Swordmaster, particularly since... Well, one, if you don't, Frank's going to take it. So, right. It, like right behind you. So you're going to cost yourself a ton of position. Right. Um, and then after that, you know, who knows? You, like Sneaker's going to have position on you later. He doesn't have the Solari now, but by then, who knows? So you might be putting yourself in a, in a considerable hole for getting access to the Swordmaster if you don't take it. I would be surprised if he didn't, if he has the opportunity. Oh, we have our first Highliner. Big moves. Not good news for Rob's Worm. No, it looks like he'll be able to double second place reward, maybe, depending on what Sneaker does. Sneaker does have an Intrigue card, but Rob has three Intrigue cards, so Rob's in much better position here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, also not great news for Sneaker's three troops. That he's got in. He's, he was first into the conflict, but is now behind. And third place in this conflict Whoa. is. Now, oh, Look but at there's all those some swords. swords. There's some swords. Okay. Two from Shishakli, and it looks like three from Strike Fleet. Yeah, it would have been uh, pretty unfortunate for him to end up with only third after, for this commitment uh, a troop and a spice. So. Did he miss Fremen Bond, though, on Shishakli? I don't see a Fremen card. I guess he doesn't really need the Fremen influence. He's he already has the ahead. alliance, yeah, so you know it never hurts. But I, I don't think uh, I think he's happy with those swords. Still sitting with three contracts face up. He's really got to start thinking about converting some of those for energy. Yeah, it's surprising that he. We talked about how he was going to have position, go, a, you know, a couple of rounds ago when he was going to be in second position and then in first position, and then that would allow him. Uh, to, and he hasn't. He just hasn't prioritized completing those contracts. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be last to Swordmaster, which also kind of hurts when you're trying to complete contracts. Certainly. Who needs Swordmaster when you get two points? Sneaker considering Truth Trance. He's in a really good spot with Guild Spy. He's in a really good spot. Oh, Chani? I don't know. I don't know. Did he reveal Chani? I missed it. Oh, no, he must have played, must have played Chani. Chani. Chani got an Intrigue card because he has a Worm and two troops. Right. Ah, Sardarkar Soldier, another one of the new ones. Yeah, could be good for Rob. He has Calculus of Power. Good uh, combo. Sneaker has Shashakli. True, yeah. Yeah, C Calculus of Power, obviously the dream. Kind of, kind of use every part of the buffalo in that one. Uh, 
Is that no buy from Sneaker? Uh, I think he got Truth Tracks. Oh, okay, yes. Unswerving Loyalty. So he's considering whether to use Unswerving Loyalty. It looks like he's in position where he might want to retreat a troop if he can't overcome second place. Mm. This was another reveal of undercover asset for uh, Rob. Rob not taking advantage of the agent text on that card. I mean, certainly he already has access to Siege Tabor, um, but hasn't felt the urge to use it to try to get into uh, either Imperial Privilege or shipping. Yeah, Imperial Privilege obviously kind of difficult to commit to early in the game. Um, with yeah. an Pre Swordmaster. Yeah. And uh, he has not been sitting on a lot of resources, so maybe he had a window to go to shipping to try to get Swordmaster faster, but I think he's going to be fine with second Swordmaster as things stand. Okay, so I'm first next, so I don't need to worry. Wait, does. Does Rob have the resources? Get his sword oh, I, I thought we were suggesting before that he did. I thought he did but, too. But yeah, now I'm not it seeing it. I don't see. Uh, it may have six. just been his Solario was stacked in a way that made one of them look bigger. Well, that's very good news for Frank. Absolutely. Cool. We'll jump into position on Swordmaster. Ah. Rob is revealing uh, undercover asset, as we just mentioned. If he doesn't think these swords will help him in the conflict, that spy could go down on Swordmaster sure. and make sure that as soon as he does have Solari, at least he won't have to worry about being blocked. Sure, but it does look like he's able to hop over Sneaker mm. with the swords. Well, he did push an extra troop, uh, right. and then yeah, and then he did, and then used the swords as well to get to eleven. Uh, it should be. He has a dagger, though, as well. So it should be 12 if he's using that for swords, I think. I'm actually going to play um, manipulate. I think he is on 12. And I'm going to, so that's ah, yes. he's on 11. Ah, yes, you're right. Desert survival off to make it one cheaper. Uh, and so I, I'm going to buy this for one and this for three. Was that manipulate that we saw? I think it was. Yeah, he Almost reduced the cost of a card. Yeah, manipulate an intrigue card that replicates the effect of a, a leader signet ring from original base of Dune Imperium. Set aside a card that's in the row. Only you can buy it this round, and it costs one less. Uh, I used that to grab up uh, desert survival, I believe. You pay the five right now. You'll take it. No, so you'll, you will pay this five for that. And I don't get the five. Correct. Five more. So you get five more. They're talking about uh, how Corn City works yeah. right now. I forgot about that part, too. Oh, so right. Just, like, Frank revealed it. Oh, I also I have like the... Get five. Oh, no, I, I took that. Yes. Well, we don't have the high council without going there. So Frank revealed Corn City and turned down the option to spend five Solari to take a high council seat. He hasn't turned it down. Okay, yes, now he has turned it down. Yeah. That, what do you think about that? It looks to me like he has 12 Solari. Well, no, he took, no, he had. Oh, he got five he Solari. He had seven. He had the option to go yeah, down to two, two to take a high council seat, and I think he's basically saying, no, I want Swordmaster. Swordmaster. Which is a reasonable decision. It is a little bit unfortunate to in my opinion, to reveal Corinth City and just take five. Like, it sounds like a lot, but for a six-cost card, revealing for five Solari isn't the best value on Arrakis. Would it have... I mean, for me, that decision is... Like, you get that two persuasion from the High Council right away, right? So I wonder if he just wasn't happy with what... Was that Tread in Darkness yeah. available to him? So he could have gotten that instead of... Uh, to prepare the way if he had made that choice. Does he have any, choice? any Jesuit cards? I don't know I that don't he does. So. Yeah. I think Jimmy is the one who would want Tread in Darkness. It's still it's still certainly not a bad card. Two, two Persuasion and a Sword is a strong reveal, and it has good agent icons, but um, 
certainly uh, it's not what it is when you can enable that very powerful Bene Gesserit ability. All right, there's no action in the conflict, uh, so it falls as it lies. Uh, Tough Rob beats for, uh, for Sneaker. He probably thought he was going to be able to steal second there with all those swords that he revealed. Yeah, Rob went up four strength, I think, during his... Five strength, I believe, during yeah. his reveal so they turn. They both had very strong reveals. Yeah. I get another point for the green. Holy shit. And I go up. Uh, so Frank got a match on that one. Is he also paying? I bought the VP for three Yes, he did pay for the VP. Got the pair and then got an influence. Looks like with the spacing guild. A lot of value for Frank yep. on that conflict. Is that a three way tie now at four points and Rob kind of falling behind that two? It does seem that way. And uh, Frank is in a strong position to take the spacing guild alliance. Frank also is the only player who has any influence with the emperor. So Frank seems to be in a decent position right now. Uh, these are all gone to glory. But I'd say every, every player at the table has something going for them. And Rob's, Rob's got uh, quite a stash of resources right now that he's going to be looking to utilize in a way that will get him kind of back into this game. Yep, often where the worm player winds up in the middle of the game. Ooh, shield wall. Ah. Uh, so Rob is in first position here. Could have scooped up Haga Basin, as we've seen that he loves to do. Wonder if he would have now, but now he doesn't have the option, unless uh, one of those intrigue cards can help him out. Uh, he might be thinking about Siege Chamber here, based on how we've how we've seen him play and how he's prioritized worms. Could see him go to Siege Chamber to try to get that wall out of the way. Yeah, but Sneaker is sitting on three water. Like he might be just setting up Sneaker to summon worms. That's true. Although at least Deep Desert doesn't have any bonus spice right, right now. That's, uh, de depending on exactly what the conflict is, that uh, can be a high price to pay. Uh. This appears to be the conflict for uh, basin? the basin. Mm -hmm. Secure with, the basin. Uh, two water and a troop for second prize. So even a worm player who spends three water and take second is at least getting a full rebate and then some on their water and two troops. Of course, you probably would rather win it. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, they're calling out the uh, fact that the shield wall is up. Rob was trying oh, to go to... Oh, so yeah. So we know, so we, know we know what Rob wanted to do. He's... You're in position. That's stupid. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's important to, to notice when those conflicts get, get up. Um, I know we we worked hard to try to make sure that was that was as clear as possible. Yeah, it's definitely not, a big deal. Not only a, an icon with a, you know no worms allowed icon, but also like the complete color change on the conflict card itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and I just go Kaka's, ready to play. <laughs> power to spice refinery. Uh, so spice, be, his uh, worm plans being uh, now deferred. Rob uh, looks like putting his eye on Swordmaster. So I'm going to use some future knowledge here because I asked uh, the players some questions after the game. And I think this was a point where Rob kind of self-criticized himself for not using an intrigue card. I think he's sitting on an intrigue card that would have allowed him to spend two spice to get five Solari. And if he had used that, he could have just hopped into Swordmaster right away and cut Frank off. Wow. Very big swing, if so, because... I don't think it's too hard to guess what's about to happen uh, as, as Frank is next in position with Swordmaster money that he carefully did not spend during his reveal turn last round. And Rob needing to use those swords uh, from undercover asset in the conflict didn't put a spy down on Swordmaster. So yep. even with the money, He's not going to be able to get there this round if Frank does what we can see that Frank yeah. is now doing. And then worst case scenario, if Sneaker gets ahead of him, gets to six. Absolutely could round. happen. So, yeah. Um, Bit of a rough spot there for Frank, though. He had prepared the way, and he used it to get Swordmaster, which indicates kind of a rough hand, right? You'd rather use a dagger. Because, you know, he'd be fine with using prepare the way if he had two Benny Jesser at influence, but he doesn't. So that kind of just, you know, is... 
kind of a, a, a hurt move when you lose two persuasion like that yeah I think he would have really what he would have really rather is if Rob hadn't come out of his turn with swordmaster money and Frank could have just waited until his second action to right. take the swordmaster right. would have been really nice it would have been really interesting what a really interesting level we talked about you talked about the uh, market opportunity play that Rob didn't make what Rob potentially even further could have done was not use that card and also not play to spice refinery, not represent having Swordmaster money, and put Frank in a position where he thinks he can float Swordmaster right, right. and then block him by taking it with a second action using the market opportunity. Yeah, that's a deep play. I think it only makes sense if you have something critical to do with your first play because in Frank's position, I often will be in a position where I actually don't have a critical first play and I'm just happy to take Swordmaster to see what else other players do. So so I, I would say that's deep but risky. Sure. It would have been hilarious though. <laughs> Lots of chatter here about Guild Spy. Basically, Jimmy and Rob talking about uh, clogging up the spy spot so Frank can't, can't get away with uh, guild spy murder. Yeah, I mean, there's only currently one influence spy, of, or one uh, faction spy of, spot available right now. Yeah, and the, and the spy that Frank does have is not particularly useful. Like, he's probably going to get the guild alliance even without guild spies help? Yeah, I would say the same thing is more or less true of the Fremen one. Like, yeah, he needs one more influence there at some point. Guild spy could give it to him. But it's not terribly unlikely that he's going to play to one of the Fremen spices at some point this game, which will give him the point anyway. And he's not in a great position to make a run at Sneakers Alliance. No one is. Right. Yeah, Emperor would be the the critical spy for this game, for Guild Spy to be on, because then you could just get some influence with the Emperor without having to devote uh, actions to it. Yeah, and after that, I would say Benny Jesterit sure. would be the next best, and those are the two that Jimmy has blocked. Yeah, and Jimmy's probably going to continue blocking uh, Benny Jesterit for the whole game. So if I, if I had a higher council... So I think it's a kind of a lesson about counterplay here, like buzz about Muad'Dib going into the event being, a, you know, potentially the most powerful leader in the uprising mix. Mm. But there's counterplay; you can block Muad'Dib. Mm -hmm. Guild Spy, lots of buzz about it being one of the strongest cards in the mix, but there's counterplay. Yep. Did see, I missed it, but Sneaker did manage to complete a contract. I probably. Yep, he placed a spy, so. Oh, um, uh, went to espionage. Yep. He did it, that was an espionage contract, right? Yep. So finally starting to convert those. I wonder if this is around where Jimmy is thwarted from doing his Benny Jesseret operative. It seems like he's been doing it almost every round, so maybe this is around where Jimmy actually doesn't have Benny Jesseret operative. Yeah, so now we're back to Rob, and now Rob. Yeah, just hold your hands down. And so he has access to Siege Tabor. You can still play. It's not blocked. He could he could blow the wall. Yeah, he does have two <laughs> troops in, and no other garrisons are populated right now. Um, so could just go to Siege Tabor, blow. The, oh no, I guess he won't get it. Won't get an extra troop. But Jimmy is sitting that. on a lot of spice. Jimmy could have like Highliner coming uh, in. I believe yes, that does look like five spice to me. We don't have a. Oh, yeah, it's it's undercover asset. <laughs> that card's so nice. All right, this is our first what undercover is? asset play. Where did he send it? I'm trying to see. Oh, oh Imperial Privilege. So he did leverage it. Okay, so. Not being able to get into Swordmaster, oh, kind of right. chose a chose a fallback option to get an ex, to get an extra action, and was able to undercover asset provided that option to him, despite the fact that he has no influence with the Emperor whatsoever. And he cycled out an intrigue card that he considers is not important to his game plan. It's it's a card that lets you get a Solari and a contract if you gather spice. Mm. Um, so he's just looking for something better there, and delaying his move. 
I wonder if he does have a, an intrigue that will blow the wall and he's just trying to kind of delay until the last moment uh, to catch other people by surprise and to stop Sneaker from being able to get in there with a worm uh, before he can. That would be a great reason to try to grab that extra action and change your position in the conflict. Pretty probably very, very tricky space to use. A lot going on with that oh, yeah. space. I was almost thinking about grabbing it just to not let you have it brutal in the rebate. It's like Frank gets the high council contract, right. which is interesting given that he has the one card in the game that would allow him to get his high council seat without going there, but now he has reason to go there anyway. Yep. It looks to be to me like there's a Sarkar card contract to draw two cards available. That's something that probably Jimmy wants because he has Sardaukar card coordination. Um, late in the game, push being able to go there, get four troops, get an intrigue card, push those four troops, and draw two cards and potentially get a spice must flow. That's that's that sounds like a turn. It's it's a way to kind of close out a game. Oh I can't cheat. Oh what happened? Yeah also Jimmy's been sitting on that uh, two troop highliner contract. Uh, oh, which can right. be quite a quite a combat swing in one move. The the Mr. Beast crew calls that I believe okay. a big line. English mm -hmm. was undercover asset. Yes. To go here. Because oh, I go past okay, the influence okay, okay. requirement. Yes. His turn, accept contract, he took the high council for Solari contract. Yes. Jimmy's turn, he took my space on Spice okay. Refinery and got the four. Rob giving us a nice recap of the last round of play. Shashakli sighting. You see this, I think her agent deck is infinitely better than the one. Card I uh, in greatly enjoyed playing with during uh, playtesting. Never learned how to pronounce it. <laughs> so he is finally making a research station move. So he's completing another contract in the same round. He's going to get to place another spy. Another trash from Sneaker. This deck's getting. We talked about how many good cards he was getting into his deck. He's also thinning his deck quite a lot. That is a, a powerful combination. Yep, both daggers gone. Now Reconnaissance gone. <laughs> Sneaker, by the way, is part of the uh, group of players who from the Netherlands. There were three of them, I believe, at this event. And they actually started playing Dune Imperium um, physically um, in Denmark, uh, not Denmark, excuse me, Frank's from Denmark, in the Netherlands. Um, the other two players are, I believe, their names are Martin and the Blackstone. And uh, they played a ton in real life. And then one of them, uh, I think, came to the United States for college. And then they ended up going online to continue playing, and that's how he joined oh. uh, that community. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I love how active the community for this game is, um, online especially. Running tournaments. Uh, it's been really incredible to see the, uh, the adoption and uh, the, the degree to which players like, enjoy jamming just again and again and again. Yeah, the amount of energy some of the tournament organizers uh, put into those tournaments uh, is kind of incredible. Uh, Black Shadow in particular, like he casts so many games, he's so good at it. Uh, it's unfortunate that we're doing this from you know Direwolf HQ. We can't have Black, Black Shadow here with us, but uh, gotta tip our hat to to his efforts. Black Shadow did also uh, assist me in uh, operating this tournament. Uh, it was a big help people getting the troops because yeah. I went in, the wall was up or something. I don't know, I can't remember, but it just blocked it. Just keep keep safe. Some table talk going on here. This conflict is, uh, there's not many agents left out there and not many troops in the conflict. I feel like there's going to be some, some real good deals, this conflict. Yeah. I mean, Sneaker is still taking his turn, right? He has the option of just going in. But even if he doesn't... He's being cautious. He's only putting two troops in. Is he basically afraid that uh, 
Rob is going to come in with, uh, with his last action. Or who knows how many daggers Sneaker has. He's, he's had some hands where he's revealed a, a fistful. Right. And he, yeah, and he has a lot of cards. Huh? He's trying to play his five. Uh, yeah. Where'd this five come from? Oh, the contract. Ah, Sneaker completed another of his contracts. Yeah, so, so he's, 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 he's determining where to put his spy, which, you know, in casual play, like, you often just, like, pick a spot that you know you're going to go to, but here he's probably considering, like, how much, you know, he can thwart other players with this move. And it looks like he chose the to get in on Swordmaster. Yeah, it seemed like he was debating between that and guaranteeing later worm access at Deep Desert. Um... Which makes some amount of sense, given the possibility of him coming out of this conflict with uh, enough water to visit Deep Desert. Mm -hmm. But um, Rob, looking at an intrigue card, is he about to use it? Does he have the uh, shield wall detonation card? Yeah, the spy on Swordmaster. So Sneaker does have position on Rob as the only other player who doesn't have a Swordmaster. Uh, so you, you might think he doesn't need that spy, but he doesn't actually have Swordmaster money yet. Right. And there's no Solari at stake in this conflict. So he might be thinking, you know, he's going to need to spend an action next round getting the Solari, maybe going to Spice Refinery. Uh, or does he have, a he doesn't have access to shipping. Yeah, uh, trying to get the Solari for Swordmaster. And so then would be vulnerable to being blocked by, by Rob if he manages to, to wind up with enough Solari to get, to get Swordmaster with his first action next round. So what is going on here? Rob is playing an agent to Haga Basin, which to me is an indication that he's about to blow the shield wall and say, surprise, and, and uh, we have Worm Sign. But did he just pass it? Did he just collect two spice from Haga Basin? <laughs> so you're going to be on eight combat. And he trashed a convincing argument. He doesn't have a discard pile. Did he trash that from hand? <laughs> I think so. I think he's just giving up on Spice Must Flows and going all in on combat. And I'm predicting a Spice oh, Must Flow. Wait, there. Flow. There, you just took the two Spice. So I think you're right. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. And there's the, there's the convincing argument. So yeah, trash. Yeah, that, that's... So both his convincing arguments are gone now. Not... Not the kind of turn that you want to have after, you know, going to Imperial Privilege. But I guess he decided, hey, nobody else came into the conflict. I don't need backup. And he must not have. I, I mean, it's very clear now that he doesn't have a way to blow up the shield wall. So he has two, four, six. So he has ten cards, which means he's bought um, three, right? Which were Sneaker, Stilgar, Sneaker probably has... Uh, the Spice Must Flow persuasion in his hand. He, he went to Research Station. If he has Stilgar, you know, he's got Shashakli, probably another Fremen. He's probably at the stage of the game where he's going to buy a Spice Must Flow? I, 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 I bet he really hopes that he does because for this stage in the game, we've actually got kind of a low-cost rogue. We're starting to hit the point in the game where some of those yeah. lower cost cards are not as attractive as they might be earlier in the game. Uh, at, once you've made your deck better and you're trying to draw your your you know your big cards more often. So there's kind of a, a big delta between spice must flow persuasion and anything short of that. So it looks like Frank just did the Corinth City um, conversion for a point. He discarded two cards, spent Solari, um, and got a, got a special point. Uh, at Sardarkar? I think, is that what happened? Uh, no, he, he doesn't have troops. Con he went to Dutiful Service, and Jimmy is now going to Sardarkar. Okay, I was like, where are these so troops? So this is a big move oh, by Jimmy. The coordination. So, uh, yeah, he didn't manage to get that starter card contract first, like you were talking about, but he did manage to uh, use that starter card of coordination yeah. the way it's meant to be used, yeah, if you it's will. Yeah, perfect <laughs> position to use it, like a conflict where only two other players went in with two troops. Yeah, late action, makes to, okay, he did get the influence there. Yeah, that was, that was a really big play for Jimmy, because as it was, in the absence of that, 
Rob and Sneaker were prepared to come away with some very efficient troop to resource conversions. Yeah. Uh, whoever won, they were going to wind up generating a lot of value. And so Sneaker does get the Spice Must Flow. He did have Strike Fleet for three swords, but this is yet another conflict where Sneaker is just kind of edged out. Mm. So, yeah. you know, he's playing a good game, but uh, the results of conflicts are not, not working out. Not breaking his way. Form. Yeah. Oh, a wise retreat from Rob with unswerving loyalty. Conserves yeah. his uh, energy. Great. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. Was, this round was a, was a pretty big swing for Jimmy, I think. Yeah, the, um, I think it's easy to underestimate, um, you know, obviously these are experienced players, they know, but I think it can be easy to underestimate when you're deciding whether to go for a conflict or whether to try to invest in, in moving your position up. You know, it's easy to look at what you'll be getting extra, uh, but what your opponents won't be getting also relevant. So, you know, it's not just ah, I'm getting going from nothing or from third to first. It's also that opponent's going from first to second. That opponent's going from second to third. Each of them are only one of your opponents, so it doesn't count the same as you generating resources, but it sure counts. And uh, can't tell what that. I think the symbol, the battle icon on this conflict, is a desert mouse. I believe you're right. Which Jimmy does not have. He just has a Christ knife, so now he's got two different battle icons that he's hoping to find. It's going to be Frank first this round, which tells me that it is round six. If we're just going by scoreboard, Frank and Sneaker are in the lead at six points. Jimmy is in second at four, and Rob is trailing behind still at two. Of course, the scoreboard is not really all that you can consider. Um, battle icons in front of you are a good indication of potential energy, and it looks like Sneaker has zero icons left to match. Um, Frank has one, and Rob and Jimmy each have two. <laughs> Frank with the first player marker. Considering his options, his resources are quite depleted now. He's sitting on one water and looks like one Solari. So I don't know, what would you do if you're Frank here? Would you just kind of take a round to uh, gather resources, gather energy to fight another day? I mean, yeah, it's got a couple of contracts uh, that'll, that'll generate some resources. So, you know, if you're not thinking about completing those contracts, then you're getting to the point where it's, well, maybe they're just never going to happen, which could be fine. Guild Spy in the discard. So... Not setting up for a guild spy turn, at least not obviously so. Yeah, and I, I missed what he yeah. bought, but he did not buy that one cost guild card on the row, which you can combo with guild spy. Like we've been talking about the most powerful part of guild spy, which is the reveal, mm. but there's also a guild synergy agent box on that card. Yeah, when you can get those those spacing guild synergies working, they can be very potent. I can attest from some of the pickup games I got to play before the tournament. Um, definitely did some work with Staban. And, um, oh, if I, let me recall the name of the card. Guild Envoy. Oh, yeah. Very good Staban card. 
gives you, uh, recovers your, sort of right away, gives you the politics access that Stavan so, so lacks. And then if you can get Spacing Guild going with it, it's just incredible. Especially uh, Spacing Guild's favor. Uh, I think one of the first games I played this weekend, I paired Guild Envoy with Space and Guild's favor like every time and just kind of ran away with the game. That's that's a extremely powerful way to go, but don't sleep on the Spice Must Flow. <laughs> True. Easy to miss that Spice Must Flow now in Uprising has a faction tag. That is a Space and Guild card, uh, which matters a lot if you have cards like Guild Envoy or Space Time Folding. Uh, what a more perfect card could there be to discard to your... Uh, to power your other abilities. I'm guessing that Frank's in a mode now where he uh, is just going to try to get so make sure he has Solari to get a point every time he draws um, Corinth City, sure. and by not buying cards, he'll draw it more often. So he might be just satisfied with his deck. Could be. It's a very uh, committal strategy. It's not cheap to buy those points. It costs. Half your hand. Yeah, and it's hard. It's really hard to get a spice must flow on one of those rounds. Having the solder card contract is a way that you could potentially do both. Yeah, it could really tie the room yeah. together. Yeah. We get another turn though. Then Teddy. Yeah. The we tier three turn. Will, we might get to. Uh, speaking of potential energy, oh, I'm looking at up. influence tracks. I'm seeing yeah, that. Right. So Jimmy is one influence away from an extra point. Looks like Frank has three tracks. Oh, yeah, that's what the, we just heard Sneaker just talking about, I believe. Frank's three points hanging. And he means by that is that there's three different tracks that are where Frank is uh, one influence away from gaining a point two, making it to influence two, and uh, the spacing guild track where he is threatening the alliance. Um, that is a very relevant metric of potential energy. Jimmy and Rob both only in such a position on one track. Sneaker himself wow. on none. Did you see that? Frank Frank was considering playing uh, Maker Keeper, and while he's doing great in politics, he doesn't have the right influence on either Fremen or Benny Gesserit for Maker Keeper. We did talk about how that's a it's a fairly strong card, but not strong right away. And obviously you'd prefer to have get it at least a little set up first. And unfortunately for Frank, he hasn't been able to follow up that early acquire of it with getting it online. That's the risk. Yeah, I mean it's partly his choice. Like he he chose to go to Spacing Guild early to try to monopolize water. Mm -hmm. Um I don't recall if he, you know, continued on that path after choosing the uh, Maker Keeper. Oh, this next gonna be interesting. This one or the next one? The next one. The yeah, next one, I'm uh, I think Rob has taken that. Oh, that's actually Rob. So... Right. Twice. Right now. Okay, yeah, so first player marker was on Frank. I wonder Went to Eric Keen, looks like, with his first action. I wonder if Jimmy's considering um, <coughs> getting enough uh, Solari to go to High Council. Hmm. He has a stack of Solari. I can't tell if it's five. It looks like it might not be five. Yeah. Could be. But now he's got his maker hooks, so he's clearly... And, and a bunch of water. Yeah, he's clearly... He wants it on the, on the worm game. He's probably not too keen on this particular um, conflict because it's an Ornithopter, which is not a match for him. And it looks like it's the Benny Gesserit um, oh, is it? I was going to say or Spacing space, Guild. It, it might be Spacing Guild. Okay, it's very hard for us to see the tiny icons on our monitor. I guess if, if either one is actually fine for him to to win with worms, it's just, uh, yeah, the fact that it's an ornithopter conflict, part of, the, part of the reason why I got bounced in the semifinals against Frank is because I did a really bad job at matching my conflicts. I had the, what I call the trifecta mm -hmm. of battle icons face up in front of me. I couldn't, couldn't match anything. Now that could have paid off for you if you'd had the new promo card that we introduced Absolutely. At, this, at this tournament. 
I don't know if players are aware of that, but uh, it's a pretty interesting one. Yeah, we we're going to find a way to uh, distribute that at some point in the future. We kind of quickly designed it once uh, once this uh, event was put in motion. Okay, so we had Frank to Arakeen. We had Jimmy go to Siege Tabor, Siege Tabor get the hooks. Sneaker made a research station play. Interesting. Rather than Worms, went for research station. Huh. Yeah. Does that uh, suggest to you could be trying to do back to back Spice Most flows? It's a tall order, but he is Gurney. Yeah, he's Gurney. He has Although Stilgar. he didn't push. He didn't push any troops while well, he's. Is, is it, still it still on his him? Turn? I think he's Looks probably like still thinking. On him. He's probably looking at his yeah. giant hand if, of cards. Yeah, if he doesn't push, that's really interesting. Uh, but I guess. Kind of, you know, you look at what two cards you drew with research station, and then maybe that tells you whether the sure. spice must flow is going to be an option for you this round. This is the stage of the game that I think skill becomes really important. Um, you need to decide how much energy to spend in rounds five and six because the stakes are about to raise, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you need to find a way to like figure out what other people are up to, commit the right amount of energy, and have some gas left in the tank to fight for at least one of the conflict threes. Mm. Now, often these games have been ending on rounds seven and eight. Mm -hmm. My semifinals ended on round nine, mm. so it was a very tooth and nail. Everybody's mm -hmm. scraping for their points. Everybody ended at 10 plus in my game, um, but I'd say the average has probably been closer to eight rounds. Sure. It's really, it's interesting uh, the way when it's not a, uh, you know, it's not a set target. Obviously, it's a set target of VP, but you don't know how many rounds it's going to take to get there, which means, you know, I think we've both seen many games where a player who was having a, having a very good game maybe was out to an early lead, but wasn't able to necessarily convert that into a powerful ongoing engine yep. and kind of peaked too soon. You really need to pitch so you're, it, you know, if, if unless you're way, way, way ahead, you need the, the moment where you're strong, strongest, to be the right moment. If it's too early or too late, then you wind up not, you, you can wind up with a second place finish or even third place very easily. Yeah. I saw like the epitome of that kind of game uh, one night at the event where a player known by the name of Morphling um, bought undercover asset right away, hmm. used it round two to get maker hooks and just like kept summoning worms over and over and over and he was like running away with the game but eventually ran out of steam and another player uh, cj from hidden assets caught him in the mm -hmm. end and won just squeaked out the win mm -hmm. and what's what's especially interesting about that is that's often not a spot where the player who won was then going to continue to be stronger sometimes it's the case where that moment was the only moment where they were going to end up ahead. They needed the game to end right then. If it had gone longer, the player who had been having a better game would have sure. pulled ahead again. Sure. Yeah, and Guild Spy is, you know, so Worms are one way you can do that. Guild Spy is another one. Um, Guild Spy, if you run away with a game, you tend to end the game early. But if other players can find a way to stop you from getting all those spies down, getting all that influence, mm. you can run out of steam. Especially, you know, once you you have two or three Spice Must Flows in your deck, your draws become pretty bad. Sure. Okay, we had Rob with his very hard to view agents. Yeah, does he, is, yellow, does, has he sent one? yellow agents on the, on the <laughs> desert. Uh, looks like Haga. Yes, Haga, Haga for sure. Went to Haga, but because you know, he's got a worm in, so yeah. that that shouldn't have been hard to decode. Yeah, he wants to win this because it's going to basically get him a point at the Benny Gesserit without having to go there at all. If this is indeed the Benny Gesserit, if it's Spacing Guild, he'll still get a point and I guess threaten for the alliance. Frank went to gather support. I think our first visit there of the game got a couple of Solari and. Or, sorry, I'm sorry, I got a couple of troops, and I'm guessing that water he got was also from there, but I'm not sure. He might have had that already. 
Jimmy took a trip to the Emperor, secured his two influence point there, and is potentially in a position to make a run at that alliance. Uh, if I had to guess, I don't think Frank would have spent money there, like, because he's the one with Corrent City. I sure. think his money is just so precious. Well, he does have two contracts to help him get some money, but That's I fair. think, but yeah. I think you're right. Oh yeah, Jimmy. I would. I think I would bet on Jimmy making a run at that Emperor Alliance, given his very powerful oh, starter card contract. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we know he's got starter card coordination in his deck. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's set up to fight, to fight for two alliances, right? He's got a Benny. He's got that operative. Um, and he's tied for the lead. I mean, nobody's really that far ahead on Benny Jesteret. Yeah, if that isn't a Benny Jesteret, it, it might be tough to squeeze in both of those alliances before the game ends. Also, very important thing to be conscious of, you're competing with two different players, which can make things especially tough. You really kind of got to look at, do those players have other things that they're trying to do? Because if not, you can, I've, I've seen many a player uh, try to play for two alliances in a oh, position where they were definitely going to get fought by different players and wind up getting neither. Um, we did, by the way, just see uh, Rob use his market opportunity to get enough Solari to go get his Swordmaster. And only, I think only two rounds later? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. And I did hear some table talk where uh, Sneaker Dead is essentially claiming that he's not going to get a sword master this game. He's just going to it's probably get high counsel. It's round six. He only has five Solari. I mean, it doesn't seem implausible to me. This, I'm almost sure this is an Ornithopter conflict, which is not a match for anyone, I want to say. Because uh, I do think... I think you're right. Yeah, because I think that first one that Rob won looks more like a Chris knife from this angle. So there's not going to be a great deal of VP to come out of this conflict. Yeah. Which is good for the players who are playing for the longer game, I suppose. Which I guess Rob is hoping he is. Yeah, he's, he's just so far behind. Rob, uh, Rob has paid a, a high price in politicking to be able to warm as heavily as he has this game. Not only does he only have one politics point right now, he's only has one track where he's one move away from another politics point. Two tracks he's just at the bottom of. Yeah, at this stage of the game, sometimes the right thing to do is to acknowledge the fact that Rob is by no means a table leader hmm. and not fight him too hard hmm. when he is clearly going for a conflict like this because he's basically just going for a conflict trying to scrape out a politics point. So right. do you really want to get into a battle against somebody who you think is in last place? Yeah, it's a little bit of kind of what we were talking about earlier where some relevant part of the value of the conflict is what you're taking away from the other person. Well, anything you're taking away from someone who is far behind and currently doesn't have a lot of equity in the game, that's not as valuable no, as taking away from somebody who's nipping at your heels. Often meaningless. Conversely, you want to identify the table leader and try to thwart them, if at all possible. Yeah, that's a funny combo. Like and at this point, so Sneaker right clearly has the VP lead. Uh, um, he has a little bit more potential energy on the breaking. politics tracks. He's one I mean, uh, influence away from the Spacing Guild point, but he's to not honest, close on Emperor. Right Frank now. has a lot of political potential energy, too, as we talked about. He's got Corner City in his deck. So it's it's genuinely kind of kind of hard to, to separate out uh, among them. Yeah. Who, who is the table leader. Um, and it's not like Jimmy's in bad position. Got a big pile of water there. Just got his maker hooks. Uh, could potentially be ready to make a big move going into the first conflict three. Uh, you know, who knows what could happen. Deck qualities are pretty close as well. Um, I guess Sneaker being the first person to pull the trigger on the Spice Wolf's flow did diminish his deck just a bit, whereas Frank and Jimmy, as far as I've noticed, have not done that yet. Mm. And like we said earlier, uh, 
Rob just kind of gave up on Spice on Flow when he decided to uh, trash the convincing argument? Yeah, sir, like likely the first one and certainly the second one. Just like we need to, him not having five spice is obviously important for my game plan because he's turn one next turn, right? Isn't that a lot of conflict math going on right, right now. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be interesting to see which conflict three flops, which icon mm. does it have, what is the payment to get a second point, or is it going to be propaganda, which doesn't offer that mm. kind of additional way to get a point. Propaganda could potentially be, if he's not able to get the guild spy working, propaganda would be another potentially interesting way for Frank to convert his potential energy all in a rush between his, his agent moves and that. All three of those points could very easily come live uh, in the next round off of that alone, shooting him up to nine. Yeah, worm, worm with propaganda would be good for just about anybody. Right. Um, you get two alliances maybe and a question mark battle Definitely. icon that you know you can match. Like people are sitting on icons that are probably not going to get matched now unless they um, are sitting on an intrigue card. Mm. Yeah, that's always an interesting factor, right? The uh, the in-game intrigues and uprising, um, several of them key off of your unmatched battle icons. So just because you aren't able to make a pair doesn't mean that you're definitely not going to be able to convert it to a VP. And those are in-game VPs, so those can be quite a, quite a surprise and sort of upend things at the end of the game. Yeah. Gift of uh, Swordmaster or uh, highlighting gifts here on the NA Union. Oh, you, Rob continues to <laughs> a streak of. Uh, oh, did Rob just pick up a Swordmaster? Frank, Frank does finally pull the trigger on that uh, one cost guild card. And it looks like uh, there's a card that reveals for two spies on the board. A little, a little late for that card. Oh no, Rob must have got his Swordmaster earlier this round, and then he just his other two spaces were just both placed for both the Harvest spaces. Once to get a worm, once just to get spice. Oh, Jimmy going in big with uh, the two double worms, here. worm. So not waiting. Very interesting. Not waiting until the conflict three, where he might have been able to get a bigger payoff off of those worms. Yeah. Going right now. That's very interesting. Putting a lot of uh, priority on getting an alliance here. Um, I reveal, I get to retreat to repeat my power. I get one dagger. Uh, fortunate for Rob that his he was in a position with uh, Chani to sort of uh, soften the blow from Jimmy having gone over the top of him in this conflict by retreating some troops without even lowering his strength. He's currently in second place, which would give him two intrigues, two spice, and two troops. Not bad for, for one worm and one troop committed to the conflict if Frank doesn't steal that away from him. True, although a person notices that he's currently sitting on three intrigues. So right. unless he's able to, between this reveal turn and the combat, convert oh. some of those, both Jimmy and Sneaker are going to be in a position to potentially steal an intrigue from him with a trip to the Benny Gesture. And that's a place either of them could very plausibly be interested in going. I could be mistaken, but I think Rob go. failed to draw an intrigue card for his Muad'Dib power this round. Oh, I think you might be right. That's unfortunate. Because he's going to go, he's going to go above the limit next round, right? Right. So you gotta, you gotta take the draw here. I mean, maybe you get a combat card that helps you with well, this combat. Well, I mean, it's not optional anyway. So it's optional. just, it's just a, it's just a bit of, it's just a bit of an error. But also, yeah, it's, it's. There's always that interesting point in the, you know, you spend. Most people spend most of the time trying to stay under the limit and prevent themselves from getting intrigues cards stolen. Every now and then, you could wind up yourself up in position. And this will more often happen when you have a leader like Muad'Dib or in base set, uh, the Baron, who sort of generates a lot of intrigues, 
where you can't uh, sing under the limit and you actually just yeah. give up on it and no, you might have five or six insurance cards in hand and you just accept dagger. that if somebody is willing to go to secrets, they're gonna get one from you. So Jimmy so does manage to three. take this conflict down. It was Benny Jessert after all. So that's the alliance for Jimmy. Yeah, I'm gonna show them. Uh, that's a powerful entry card. That is like the perfect card yes. for his position too. I would say so. So that card lets you uh, draw a card, oh, and yeah. I believe yeah. if you have two spies, draw an additional card. Right. Um, so, you know, if you're, for the purposes of something like buying a spice must flow, yeah. hard to do better. I mean, he's already, with Benny Jesser at Operative, it's, it's such a strong card because it has two strengths. One is you send to Benny Jesseret, board space, uh, and place a spy with its There's agent box. The other uh, is it generates the three persuasion on, on reveal if you have at least two spies on the board. So mm. he was already in position <laughs> where he wanted There's two spies on the board anyway. Combo I could draw that would, would mean I could do nothing. So <laughs> don't put those up. There's also the possibility that we're going to see a a conflict card that wants you to have two spies on the board. <laughs> and Jimmy did flash his entire hand of intrigues right, at the camera, and he certainly has one of the endgame intrigues that uh, uh, right, that gets a point from having an unmatched battle icon. And well, and so we can see that... <laughs> he's got the trifecta. <laughs> yeah, unless he matches, happens to be uh, win a conflict that matches exactly oh, that one. Oh, Ornithopter okay. is the flop. So Ornithopter and Spice Conversion for the for the bonus points. Yep. So these are... And Jimmy gets a defensive bonus for controlling um, the basin. Yeah. So these are... This is an interesting uh, set of Conflict 3s that exist in Uprising, whereas uh, sort of their equivalents in base set would just give you two points. Now it's a little bit different. There's only one of the points is guaranteed, and you can pay some amount of resources to get an additional point. Which see, with the draw two. <laughs> which yeah, which which seems worse, but you have to remember you're also getting that battle icon. Mm -hmm. So really you uh, might be getting three well, points off of that victory. And that's before we start talking about worms. Right. Yeah, with worms that goes up to five, right? If you match, oh, look, he's flashing his hand. Looks that like, looked a, like lot a lot of persuasion. persuasion. <laughs> I saw two convincing arguments, I saw prepare the way. We know he can draw two cards with his entry card. He, he, know he, he has did. A, he did. Oh. That's, that's how he's flashing such okay. a ridiculous hand out. We know. Actually, I didn't see if he has his Sardaukar oh. coordination in there. It looks to me like he only has three spice. Uh, but if he's able to find a fourth spice and go to Sardaukar coordination, drop a pile of troops in, draw two cards, which will almost definitely allow him to buy a spice must flow. Uh, well, he has no water. He, he spent his water last round. I think it for Jimmy, it, this is a rebuild round. Oh, oh, I saw Sardar card coordination. Oh, here we go. So this was a, this was an error that happened during the game where Jimmy uh, had some of his some of his blade cards did not make his way back into his deck when he uh, when he reshuffled. Uh, unfortunately for him, it was actually some some pretty strong ones. Uh, diplomacy was one of them. I seem to recall. Oh, I believe that actually is seven spice that Jimmy has, not three. And I think oh. I seem to recall at this moment that he was kind of digging for his diplomacy. I think that might have been his only access to Highliner. I see. And uh, little did he know, he was digging to nothing because he had forgotten to shuffle it in, which is uh, which is unfortunate. It sounds like the judge, i.e., you in the past, said we're going to play it as it lies. Yeah, I believe we're, these cards are going to go to his discard. Uh, this is a situation where it's just a little bit too late in the game to do a, uh, a kind of pure fix where you just kind of go back. Jimmy's drawn a new hand, drawn new cards, post his new hand via his intrigue. Just too hard to reconstruct. I think the call there was to shuffle. Oh, to shuffle in his deck? deck? Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're essentially playing as if you didn't draw those cards. Exactly. You're playing a so universe a, that could have existed. It's a plausible state. It's a plausible state, yeah. Um, that potentially could have been a little bit more well, awkward if those, <laughs> if they had been bad cards. You know, that's kind of a more awkward situation where the player like seemingly gain an advantage from their mistake. Yeah. Uh, didn't feel as bad about this fix in this case because Jimmy, it had been his mistake and he, he, I think he kind of, he should only hurt himself, so. 
Yeah. Okay, so here we are. He started. Oh, he did have four. Oh, right, because yeah, I said that was a that was a, a five spice. So he did have the spice for starter car. Has the contract? Had the starter car coordination? Is he gonna push these in? I mean, he's going for it. It's starter car coordination. You're kind of obliged. Uh, it's on the card. It, he needs to flip his contract and draw two cards here, doesn't he? He does. There oh, he goes. There he I would have been surprised if he. Had, I think he drew the two cards and oh, just yeah, didn't flip the con. Yeah, he's got he's got a mint full. I noticed that happening a lot on the weekend. People taking effects but not paying costs. Yeah, they uh, somehow that's the that's the easier part for them to remember. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I certainly remember myself nudging people uh, repeatedly to sort of sequence that in the correct order. You are always supposed to pay board space costs first. Um, you know, it feels like a, a small thing, and it is, but it's, uh, I think it's kind of a, a sort of a matter of having the habit to do it the right way, preventing these errors from creeping up in the first place. And, you know, they're in high pressure situations. There's like, $20,000 on the line in this. Yeah. And on top of that, it helps your opponents understand what's going on. <laughs> it can be uh, it can be kind of, uh, you know, maybe a little annoying or unfortunate when you person has made their move, so you sort of implicitly, might, maybe without even thinking about it, assume that they spent whatever resources they need to spend, sure. and you're analyzing their resources, figuring out what they can do next. And then maybe later on a little bit in their turn, without even you noticing, then their resources go away. So here's Rob coming in with a Highliner move, which is really great for him because he gets his Spacing Guild point with this move and comes over the top of Jimmy. Yep, who, uh, despite having the Big Liner contract, uh, because of the uh, diplomacy kerfuffle, did not have the option to leverage it and had to spend his spice on yeah. Sardaukar. We just heard Jimmy say, well, I'm not winning this combat. And <laughs> we, I can see why. And he's now kind of, I think, in a rough position mm -hmm. because his resources are really low. He has no water. He can't summon a worm. And Rob still has water and still has... Oh, the, the wall is up. Right. The wall is yeah. still up. Who wants to blow the wall? Um, I'm guessing it's difficult to tell, but I'm guessing Rob doesn't at the moment have enough spice to get an extra point off right. of this conflict. And even worse news for him, that icon does not match. He has the two oh. other icons. Right. So I think on the overall, this was probably a fairly unfortunate conflict for Rob to have come up, although he only has one spot on the board, so I'm not sure any of the other conflict threes would have been a lot better. He's just kind of in a hard spot. Yeah, and uh, this might have been his window of opportunity to go Highliner, though. Um, I don't remember if he bought any other icons in his deck that could have gone to Highliner next round. Uh, he does have one card that I th I'm trying to recall if it can go there or not. But his, uh, no. No, Undercover Asset doesn't have political icons. So yeah, it's very possible he does not have any other card that can get there. So yeah, unfortunate position for Rob. Um, you kind of have to pull the trigger when you've got the spice. And it looks like Sneaker might be in position next round because Sneaker's going to get the first player token. Sneaker's sitting on at least four spice. Um, so he would have priority on the Highliner. Right, and there's spice at a... Uh, at stake in this conflict. Everybody who finishes in that first right. is going to come up away with a pile of spice. Now, Frank does have a spy on the Spacing Guild, so if Frank can just kind of claw up his spice up to five, that puts him in a position to guarantee a Highliner as long as he draws an icon. Hard to guess, though, at this point, where that spice is going to come from. No bonus spice on the board. True. Yeah, Frank has ways of getting Solari and obviously no, wants to for Corinth City. Did we see Hidden Fleet from Sneaker no, without no, no. getting troops? Yeah, look, they're literally white right here. Uh, so without white. pushing troops? I, I can't. Ah, because he went to the High Council with it. Is that? But he must have. Yeah, I mean, he, he did get the troops, he just didn't. Right, right, right. 
Yeah, I feel like you usually see that card played to a a, a combat space. And, yeah, and then Sneaker just kind of went in there to get his point with the uh, spacing build and goes up to three water, which could be really important going into next round. Could be. I mean, Sneaker could easily just reveal a Spice Must Flow to go from four to five so Spice. Yeah, hmm. yeah, I knew I was going for second because I didn't get any semis. But Sneaker also just used his diplomacy this round, so he might not be able to go to the Highliner next round. Don't remember him being particularly deep on spacing gold cards. He was kind of been yeah. doing the Fremen thing for most he of the He tried to do the Fremen thing. I think other players yeah, were did. also aggressively taking Fremen. It did get split up a bit. I guess Rob has as much of it as anyone. Chani and uh, a couple of unswerving loyalties. Players talking about the possibility of the wall. Oh, oh wait, Siege Tabor. Is that... Is it on Jimmy right now? And, and he spent his spice. Oh, that's right. What? Looks like Jimmy's the one thinking. Oh, well, it happened. Yeah. yeah. How is he going to scrape together resources to compete in round eight? Wait, so. Where is Jimmy's? Oh, Jimmy's play. His play cards are off, mostly off screen. Right. He hasn't learned his lesson <laughs> from not having shuffled his cards in last time. He's got them a little bit far away. Uh, so maybe he already play, played his card to send the agent. I have bought two, and I have no inhabitants. Is that possible? Is he thinking about blowing the wall? Yeah. Yes, though. Possibly. Um, I'm trying to see how many agents. Looks like Frank still has two agents, so yeah, I'm guessing this is only Jimmy's second agent, which would imply that he did indeed play that this turn. Oh, send that agent to Siege to Chamber with whatever card we can't see. Um, in which case, maybe he's just considering whether blowing the wall is actually good for him or not. He does have maker hooks, but he's not necessarily in the best position to leverage them of the table. Sneaker has more water, Rob has a spy on Haga, uh, and he's out Ooh. of position at least against Rob. Rob was considering going to shipping to make a political move, but I think he, oh. I think he just wanted to secure his, um, <laughs> okay. his combat strength. Okay so, this, okay, so this tells us that Jimmy went to see Shaper and did not blow the wall. Right. That is right. what happened. Yeah which implies that he might be sitting on an Intrigue card that can blow the wall. Or, or doesn't that, like to give the value. Or that he doesn't expect to be able to leverage Worms better than the, the net of the rest of the table sure. over the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean, Sneaker's sitting on three water. How many Intrigues uh, Frank went to either Spice Refinery or Arakini. Maker Keeper, um, which he still has not managed to turn on for either half. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like he just has a bunch of Solari for Corinth City. Um, Presumably. If, if he has another move coming here, he might be blocked if somebody else goes to uh, Dutiful Service. Uh, he does have enough. Does Corn City only go Emperor, or does it also go Pentagon? Uh, I think it also goes Pentagon. <laughs> so he does have enough Solari to do Imperial Privilege while uh, still potentially getting the point, although it's going to be maybe hard to leverage that extra action once you've discarded two cards. Sure. But maybe he has four more cards. Maybe he has at least four cards in hand right now, and that could work out. So Jimmy... Uh, Jimmy's grab, going for Rob's secrets. Looks like out of five. Is he going to flash this at the camera? I bet he will. Nope. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember. I, I think I almost... No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not confident enough to, to, to say that I remember what it was he took there. Oh, no, you know what? I, I actually do think. I think that was an entry card. I... Uh, Really called, I think it's called arms. Yeah. 
which is an entry card that lets you gain troops right, for right, each card you, you acquire. Mm -hmm. And I think Rob had actually previously considered playing that card just to get it out of his hand to try to potentially get below the card steal limit, but then realized he wouldn't be able to get sure. below the limit. Yeah. And so kept it because it was actually not a weak card for him. So if he was going to get stolen from, that was one of the cards he would have preferred to have stolen. Yeah. And then that's what happened. So a good play on Rob's part. Yeah, it's funny. You either want to be at three or a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> to protect your good cards. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's getting spice another slow. spice slow. One away, and clearly setting up to make himself heard on the next conflict. And he did not reveal a spice must flow, which I was speculating if he did, it would get him up to five spice, but I think he's still stuck at four spice. Yeah, but he's going to come into this con this next conflict, assuming we get there, with a huge troop lead over all the other players. True. Even as it is. And I didn't... I don't know if Stilgar was part of this reveal, but if it wasn't, that's even more. I think troops. I saw Stilgar. Oh yeah. yeah, I do think I see him. So you're right. You're right. With three water, if the shield wall is down, mm. he could just go deep desert, push in troops, find another place to push in troops. And but there's not. So there's only one of the conflict threes that does not have shield wall, is right. that right? propaganda. So he doesn't have good odds on being able to use worms True. unless the shield wall gets blown. Yeah. Could, that could end up mattering a lot. Yeah, I mean, the shield wall is factoring in really big here. Ultimately, if it goes that way, I think Jimmy, Jimmy's no decision not to blow the wall when he went to Siege Chamber this round will look incredibly smart. Yeah, agreed. And uh, this is a, yet another round where Jimmy uh, played Benny Jesser and offered it to the Benny Jesser. That card, I think, has been uh, mm. keeping him in the game, basically. That's a very powerful card. I feel like I often feel the power of that card most when it's getting revealed. I don't even know if Jimmy's revealed it once yet. No, I don't think he has. But look at Sneaker's points. I mean, he's just keeps creeping up steadily on that point track. Oh, yeah. He doesn't, he's expended his potential energy, notably. He's gonna need two influence on the Emperor or really quickly on the Spacing Guild to get another politics point. Right, so he, he either, so he probably just wants to fight for it, but he only has one intrigue. Yeah, one intrigue, but a pile of troops and a pile of water. Though, depending on the way this conflict falls out, I wonder if he could potentially win the game next round without winning the conflict. I think there's a threat of that. Sure, yeah, because who, who else can threaten? Frank, clearly with a good round, could get there, although Frank is the one player without maker hooks. Right, and Jim, or if Rob, if he comes out of this conflict, the victor is only going to get one point out of it. So during your reveal, and Jimmy, same thing. Yeah, so Sneaker. Oh. Sorry, I'm mistaken. Jimmy does have the match for this conflict, so if he was able to get it, it would be two points for him. Oh, Jimmy showing detonate here. Is he is he detonating the wall? Um, I don't that think so. There. Oh, he played Call to Arms, so that's the entry right, that right. he stole, <laughs> and it's going to generate him some okay. some troops so during his probably reveal just one. He's probably just going to buy a Spice Must Flow. But, the, but then the detonation is going to let him push uh, that troop if he wants, and the other one that he has in his garrison. Oh, he could, right, so the, the detonation doesn't have to be used to blow the shield wall, it can be used to push troops from your garrison. Right. But he's still so far behind Rob, and he's not revealing any swords. He has entry cards. He and Rob both do. Uh, but That's but you're right that it seems, a, it seems a tall order. Yeah. Ignore that. You didn't see it. Oh, he takes it back. He's not using detonate. I feel like it'd be kind of funny. And then I think inspire awe. Is the other entry card he played, which actually interacts with Call to Arms. Inspire All lets you acquire uh, a, a, a three cost or less card, similar to Bypass Protocol from the base set, and that is acquiring a card. He's he's acquiring, uh, yeah, and, and that, that gets you a troop. 
and I think we heard him say it would be funny if he just bought a ton of cards to uh, stock up yeah, his I garrison, did. but I can't imagine <laughs> yeah. he's going to turn down the Spice West Flow. It was a cheap row, <laughs> the, and he does have detonation. Like, kind of the pieces are there, but... Oh, no. Oh, he, and he bought another card just for another troop. Yeah, did, what, so did he have Spice Must Flow? Yeah, there's a choir card. Yeah, he did. And, and he had more. Yeah, he, he had, had actually like 11 or so. Sure. So he was able to get three troops out of that call to arms. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, you got to call that a success. Let alone when you're doing it on a Spice Must Flow turn. And he's created quite an interesting dynamic around the table. Now everybody knows he is sitting on a detonate. Yeah, that is uh, that is interesting. Uh, yeah, we, we were in a spot where Sneaker was set to come into this conflict with uh, leaps and bounds more combat resources than the other players, but uh, Jimmy has kind of leveled that out a bit, made himself a real threat to compete in the next conflict. Sneaker must be so happy that Rob is winning this conflict because it just gives him more time to sneak his way to a victory. Maybe that's why he's called Sneaker. <laughs> yeah, totally matters at this point. I mean, you can just put it there. Oh, you already have Hunger Basin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if anything, it could be Siege Tower so that I can break the wall, but then it just saves Jimmy in action and lets him put in four troops. Uh, Jimmy, I, we di I didn't notice it, but Jimmy, when he made that play of secrets to... Uh, to steal Jimmy or Rob's intrigue, did finally recall the, the sure. spy there. I mean, he's locked up the uh, Benny Jesser Alliance. He doesn't need to play there again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where did he put his spy? Which, which uh, spy is that? The spy that he, he placed by sending uh, Benny Jesser operative to secrets. Hmm. Looks like he's got a spy in the Landsrad on the right side of the Landsrad. Land he's got a spy at Arakeen and uh, Spice Refinery. Yeah, that Landsrad, that uh, assembly hall spy is an interesting one. I would say that's one of the least used observation posts in my experience. Yeah, I think it's often used in the late game when you think you might need that extra push to get to the Spice Must Flow. Sure. Like you, you play to the assembly hall for the persuasion, the intrigue, hoping mm -hmm. you know for a lucky intrigue. And then if you've got a spy there, card draw is good. Yeah, makes sense. But I'm not seeing a third spy. I think he might be down to two spies on the board. Uh, I will retreat one troop for a spy. And Rob using an intrigue to place a spy, retreating one troop to place a spy. Mm, doesn't look like he had a specific spot in mind though. I'm looking at faction spaces. Yeah, it kind of depends how much uh, spice he has. Emperor, that's interesting. I don't really... S right. So Sardaukar, I guess, maybe? No, because he's spending... Oh, he had enough spice so, yeah, to buy his, the point. His stack was four. So that... So what do you think about that Emperor spy placement without having that spice? Um, wow, we, yeah, yeah, I think it's dubious. I, I think I would rather have it just down on Arrakis <laughs> with his strategy. Yeah, maybe research station in case you're able to strip up an extra water. Yeah, unless he's sitting on an intrigue card that gets him an emperor rank somehow. Right, because this is late to be trying to pick up a contract at dutable service, certainly, and he doesn't have the resources for starter car. It's, that's just too long a plan, right? He need to get the spice, go to starter car, and then figure out how to deploy those troops because he doesn't have starter car yeah. coordination the way Jimmy did. Yeah, I think I, I have to say I think Rob is a really good player. I got to play with him over the weekend. And I, I, bet, oh, I bet he's fatigued from like the amount of energy he was sinking into helping other people. Uh, you know, I, I think it's a great accomplishment that he got this far. But I think I don't know who's going to win this game, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be Rob at this yeah, point. Yeah, there's no question. Rob was. Rob, uh, I, I, Rob was working as hard as anyone, I, I, would, I oh. think, during the production of, of this tournament. And uh, unlike the other, most of the other people who were working, he was also playing. So uh, the fatigue well, Sean, was well earned. Sean, you, know, you, could, you could call Sean like a triple threat. Fair. <laughs> he was organizing, playing, and painted the uh, trophy for this game that will be handed out after this game. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You no. Know, you're right. I was. I was selling Sean short there. Sean was responsible. Was key in making sure everybody kept getting fed. So true. Real. Right. Real. He's going in. He's got it. The Here's hero we need. I like that. 
Okay. All right, yeah, so I mean, it's not really any question at this point about deploying. Um, Yet another um, research station play for Sneaker, by the way. Did you see how bad his hand was that he flashed to the camera? I didn't. It remember. was two Spice Must Flows, two Dune the Desert Planets, and it must have been Signet Ring because that's what he played to yeah. send his agent to uh, the research station. Well, I mean, I think research station might have been where he wanted to go anyway, sure. kind of like we were talking about earlier, is the potential to pay, both play for the conflict, which he obviously wants to do here, and potentially make a Spice Must Flow run. Now, he's had a couple of Spice Must Flow turns in the row, and that has caught up to him in that bad hand that you were just talking about. So even with the research station, I think he'll be hard pressed to manage that this round, right. but it's not impossible. So this conflict is not propaganda. The shield wall is still up. Mm. Everybody knows Jimmy can destroy it. Yeah, so that could have been, that research station that Sneaker did could have been Deep Desert if Jimmy had opted to blow the wall on the Siege Chamber last round. Right, interesting. And, uh, but he had to do it, right? His hand was just so bad. What else? I guess. No, 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 sorry. No, I mean, I mean, if Jimmy had blown the wall, then, oh, the, then Sneaker could have deep desert. But yeah, maybe he had a research station anyway. I mean, he could have gone to Arakan and hope for the best with one draw. He could have gone to, he could have used a Dune the Desert Planet to go to um, accept contract. The problem with that move, though, is he just has all these troops in his garrison that he needs to get in. He needs to visit Arrakis this round. And you're so unlikely to leverage that conflict or that contract that's probably just Right, dead. it would just have been a, uh, I'm hoping so to draw and, and hoping Jimmy destroys the wall in front of me. So yeah. So, and, and he doesn't have a sword master, so the, the problem with that strategy is oh. Jimmy could just wait. Yeah, so he probably did need a research station, although of course Jimmy couldn't have known back then that Sneaker's hand was gonna be that bad. Um, Solari is the key to being able to get an extra point out of this contract, and then it is a Desert Mouse contract, which matches for everyone but Sneaker, if my eyes don't deceive me. Yeah, it was $5 worth of styrofoam. I think you're right. Rob rocking the, uh, the wheel. Every, every combat icon. Well, I mean, I have three choices. Jimmy and Rob. You're right, and it, uh, oh, you're gonna pop we, we know that Jimmy, at least one of those, is a VP for right. Jimmy. Uh, it won't help him end the game, but it will help him when the game ends. If, uh, you know, he doesn't match before then. A lot better for him if it's, if it's not a mouse. Does Jimmy have the, I mean, he's, he got a lot of troops with that call to arms. Does he have enough energy here to... <laughs> With with that detonation to, to win this conflict, I mean, he's sitting on Highliner Spice. He's definitely a threat. And he has the, the big liner, as they call it. He's got two oh. seven troop Highliner. So, oh, that second place in the last conflict set him up with all this Spice. Yeah. That's how it went. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if... You don't know I have the blood. I revealed it. You revealed it? Yeah. So, I, you know, it's... But I didn't cut you, you did not cut. <laughs> but it, but let's say, let's say he wins this like mm. and doesn't get to summon a worm into the conflict. Does, okay. he, does he get enough points to win? Like he doesn't. He's not sitting on a bunch of Solari, so this is just two points for him if he wins it's without a worm. Just two points right now, but he has two agents left to play. So if he can potentially, and I, I think I've got my eye right now on Spice Refinery for him. If he can deploy troops while getting his Solari up. He does have a spy on Spice Refinery too, so that could could sure. help otherwise. Uh, looks like that's only gonna be five Solari. Yeah, I mean, you do need six to so, get that point. Uh, so yeah, he's gotta, be, he's gotta be looking for a route. He does have a number of entry cards that could change his math in a number of directions, but surely he is looking to see if he has a route to end the game this round. Um, Definitely, you know, he still can't know with much confidence how weak Sneaker's hand is. He's got to be afraid that Sneaker's just going to buy a Spice Must Flow and end and the game. It's, it's a, it's Sneaker has High Council and is Gurney, so he's three guaranteed persuasion. His hand would actually have to be actively very bad, which right. it maybe is, but Jimmy can't count on that. So if you're Sneaker, do you consider playing to Haga Basin just to block Jimmy from getting a worm. Very interesting. I mean, I think if you can get Spice Must Flow while 
kind of using a turn just to go to, to there. I think it's probably a good play. Which we can speculate he probably can't I see. do that based on how bad his, his starting hand was. Sure. He probably, to have a chance at Spice Most Flow, needs to draw cards with his second action. Yeah. He does have a high council. He is the only player with high council. Yes. The only player with High Council and the only player without a Swordmaster. But even then, with the, with the two doing the Desert Planets, that puts him at four. So he drew two cards. So he needs <laughs> he needs five Persuasion uh, with those two four, cards. Four, because he's Gurney. He is Gurney, sure. Okay. So it's possible. He doesn't have any daggers in his deck. But you're right. If doing the, so he's counting on one of those doing the Desert Planets. Wow. It's possible we see an early reveal for him. If he doesn't have a way to draw cards, and if he and he still needs to have hit fairly luckily on his research station draw, I would say. Yeah. I don't think he's remotely favored to have had enough persuasion off of that, even with an early reveal. Yeah, yeah. Lesson, lesson uh, for viewers at home who haven't played a, a lot of uh, Dune Imperium, but like buying those spiceless flows is great. You know, you only need ten points to win the game, but. You can get these really clunky hands in the late game uh, when you draw one or two. Well, and let's, and let's not forget, an early reveal, I don't even know if it's... Even if he could really reveal for the Spice Must Flow, would you here? Like, he really wants to deploy some more troops in this conflict. If he doesn't... Well, what is he getting out of it if he doesn't win an Intrigue card and some Spice? But if he deploys more troops, he has a really good chance of winning, right? I guess you just have to be really afraid of Jimmy's. Well, because you know Jimmy has, if Jimmy's coming in with a big highliner and you know he has detonate for a worm. And you know what's actually interesting? Because of the mistake last round, that was last round, I think, we know Jimmy has diplomacy. Right. So it kind of worked out in his for him small in that deck. Way. Yep. He has it now. So between that the big liner and the detonation. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, Jimmy is a very big threat to win this conflict. Cut of the ages. Cut of the ages. Yeah. Which <laughs> actually cycles uh -huh. back around to making the hypothetical early reveal for Sneaker That's more right. attractive, if you're not gonna win it anyway. Right. Yeah, he's maybe just happy to get second place in this position. Because I, I believe second place is $5,000 over $3,000 for third yeah. place and 1,000 for fourth. Not too shabby. He's buying a guild spy. Putting yeah, it up yeah, for yeah, me. Easy, easy. If it goes on first. Frank oh, taking that uh, point that's what? hanging there Wait, on Benny Jessert for him. So he's going up to eight oh, points really? with this move, I believe. What a nice treat to be able to have a, a tournament with such a, a such a, a nice purse. It really is. Um, it's nice to see, be able to see how things go when the stakes are high. All right, so we've got a point for oh, Frank starting to secure his political points. Uh, cashing in on that, that potential energy. He still had three hanging. He now cashed in one of them. He's been hanging on the edge of that Spacing Guild Alliance for a dog's age. I think this has to be the Highliner turn for Jimmy. Yeah, and I think it really needed to be the Highlander turn for Frank. I think Frank not having, because that would have been the point for him too, just like the Benny Jester it was. Um, I think not being able to do that was terrible for Frank and actually also really bad for the whole rest of the table except for Jimmy. <laughs> is, is Frank sitting on five? It looks like four to me. Yeah, it looks, I think it's four. Okay. I think he was just one short and he, he had the diplomacy. Um, but uh, he did not have quite enough resources to, to make it there. So this is Jimmy's first play to the Spacing Guild all game. Doesn't mm. even have a point with the Spacing Guild. Which does make it a bit of a weaker play, but you know, all can be forgiven if... But is Jimmy the one who showed the intrigue early in the game that uh, you pay a Solari for an influence? with uh, the Emperor he, or the guild. He showed an intrigue, and you tried to convince us yeah, all that's what it was, <laughs> but it's, it's hard to say. Uh, I will say that there hasn't, to my eye, been an obvious opportunity for him to have used that up until now. Well, no, we're, we're sort of hitting that point. At this point, you would probably play it for the Emperor, right? And secure that alliance. 
pick up True. the free spy yeah. and not risk anything weird happening with Frank jumping over you. Yep. Like that would be kind of a tragedy. I mean, I guess you still get to pick up the Spazing Guild influence instead, so maybe it's not that big a deal, but sure. you would rather Frank not have that point. <laughs> but at this point, yeah, nobody. I guess Rob could block Jimmy by going to Haga Basin, but he doesn't get a worm. This is the the advantage of having that intrigue card that blows the wall. So what do you mean, block him how? Like just block, block him from doubling up on points here. Well, he can, no, he can't get a worm either. The wall's still up. No, but he can visit the space. He can just send no, an agent there to gum up the space. But I mean, Jimmy can't double up on points. How, what do you mean doubling up? How, 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 how would Jimmy double up? Well, if he plays that detonation card to blow the wall and then summons a ah, worm at Haga Basin, with the detonation that combo, gives him of course. an extra point. Of course. Yeah, so that would be one of his routes here. As it stands, it looks like... He's threatening nine. Yeah, right he's, not, he's not going to get to ten without a worm unless he's got... Without a worm, without a spice must flow. I, I do a, think he has that intrigue card. I think he's probably just waiting for the last moment to use it to get an influence. That would... So, yeah, I mean, yes, that actually would make a lot of sense. You would... The, the value of hiding it there is actually pretty high. Yeah. If yeah, you, if you don't need the spy. If you can convince anyone to do anything different on the assumption that the game is going to go one more round, anything other than... Oh, Rob is, you. Rob is blocking him at uh, Haga Basin. He's thinking about Jimmy, it. Jimmy said, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't need a word. It's fine. <laughs> Some table talk. So Rob probably should gather intelligence with his spy here, right? Oh, actually, it's interesting because if Rob thinks... Jimmy can't place a spy. I might as well gather intelligence. And then Jimmy reveals that way to go up on the Emperor track, places a spy on a Hega Basin. Wow, that would be a wheels really within wheels. cool play. I hope that happens. And there are other intrigue cards. And there are other intrigue cards that give spies too. So. Oh, Jimmy just pointed out, are you going to uh, recall that spy yeah, do you, or card? Do you, did you wanna? <laughs> you know, <it's>, uh, <laughs> oh, hilarious! <laughs> oh, sneaker now coming in with his talk about the emperor point hanging and how he could place a spy there. I mean, he, he's not wrong. <laughs> There's at least two intrigues in the deck that can suddenly get you an influence with uh, each faction. There might be more, it might be for Oh, I think more, I would think, I would think more. So there's for sure, well, in this current situation, that's the question, because right. for sure there's, uh, you can pay five Solari. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot about that one. Two different. Yeah. Change Allegiance is another one. Mm -hmm. So at least three. <laughs> Gosh. I have to go splice for here. Um, oh, is he taking back his turn entirely? Like, he's just not going to Hacker Basin. That is what it looks like to me. Going to Splice Refinery for reasons... Wait, why is he burning a... He's burning an Intrigue card that would pair, pair at the end game for a point. So he can create Solari. So I don't know what he needs yeah, that what Solari is he, for. What is he, uh, I, I will say that Rob is in a... No a, a, Well, it's a very weird position. Like, he has very little equity in winning this game. So there becomes a point and a question. You know, sometimes it depends on how you play. Some people play first or nothing. Sure. That's very common. Uh, and some people, you know, play to kind of maximize their position. And Which makes sense. In this position, there's money on the line. Even more true. Like, third and fourth, there's a, there's a prize purse difference between those. Um, Rob might feel he has little enough equity in this game that he's not making plays that have any chance of any of them first. He doesn't see a path there. He's trying to... What do you think his path is? Like, why, why do you think he wants that Solari? <sighs> you know, at this point, I would have to guess it's intrigue card related. Sure. Maybe something like that intrigue card we were just talking about that gives you two influence. I don't know if he's in a position to use that, or... You know, I have to believe that it is something like that that's not apparent. Because um, I don't think he thinks he's suddenly going to win this conflict and be able to convert that Solari for a point, so... Yeah. He's just so low on two influence tracks. He's at zero on 
Kemper does, and Benny Gesserit. Doesn't have an agent left to potentially go to High Council, which would have been one possible answer. Right. That I that I can see. I think. Uh, one, two, three, four. We're three agents deep. Although again, those yellow agents are just the best spies in the game. <laughs> you just cannot see them anywhere. There's Corner City for Frank. Oh, these pair to come back, so no spies. Uh, but he doesn't. Does he have enough spice no. to use Corner City? Or no injury. So yeah, I guess his tenth point is his permit, and then eleven with his spice. I think Jimmy, Jimmy talking to the table about how Frank is going to reach eleven points here hmm. by getting another Fremen influence and a, to go to ten, and then Spice must flow to go to eleven. Is that going to be enough to win? Can you help me? <laughs> So, oh, I don't think he played Corner City. Did he play Space Time Folding and discard Corner City? Maybe he did. Yeah, I missed it if he did. Yeah, I have noticed that uh, players are, are a little inconsistent about they'll play a card and then they'll play the, uh, their next card to the left, and it makes it very tricky to try to reconstruct the round. He did just point out that he did, in fact, discard that. We're still in round seven, is that right? Who's got the first player marker? No, no it must be round eight. No, this is round eight, yeah. And likely to be the final round because people are going to hit ten. <laughs> um, I mean, Frank, is, yeah, Frank still has an action left, so it's... Well, Frank just used his third agent, I believe. Mm, is that not a that's a dagger right is that there. an agent? It looks like an agent. Hard to tell. I see two on the board. Yeah, I think Frank has an agent left. Is Jimmy using his final agent? Uh, Jimmy though? is going to Haga. How is Frank up an agent if Sneaker has the first player marker? But yeah, the worm, the detonation worm. This could seal the deal. Uh, well, Jimmy still has an agent, I think. Oh, it's off of his leader. Oh, my God. Oh. I have it. Oh. Okay. Two spice. That's um, nine, right? Can, can you put out your Fremen? Two, four, six. Wow, he seven, did make yeah. it. Despite having two spice must flows in hand. Stilgar. He managed to find his way into a spice must flow. Why Stilgar is such a good card? Well, I mean, it was only two. It was only two. It was, you know, it was a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like being Gurney, Hall of Oratory. Yeah, prepare the way. Oh, wait, is he actually at? That's it. Oh, the He's on the hall. assembly hall. That was his last action. That's how he got there. Okay. So he did have to not de he did have to not deploy more to the conflict, sure. which I think ultimately, like what we were talking about, worked out in his favor, given that Jimmy was able to go so far over the top. Right. Uh, but now, with Rob having not blocked Haga Basin, that's given Jimmy the window. Now this is a game-ending conflict for him. Or, well, the game's ending either way, but now it's a a potentially winning conflict for him, yeah. uh, although he is behind on tie breaks to Sneaker by... Right, but if he does have an Intrigue card that will give him one influence on either Spacing Guild or Emperor, then that's going to put him over the top. So would that endgame Intrigue... Correct, that we know yeah, he, he has, might be too... Right? Yeah, he could be too over the top here. Yeah. But, but if the end game is a mouse, a desert mouse, then it, it's useless to him if that's he wins right. this. That's right. Then, it, then he does need it to be need to have that uh, that influence gain. He is showing. Yes, can you, you can go up with the emperor. Well, one I saw that, that, that it was the intrigue that you thought in the first place. He does have a point there. He can go up with the emperor. And then I think maybe oh. it was Chris Knife match. So that's actually super interesting. He he had that play. It didn't matter if Rob blocked Haga Basin. He had the play available the, the, to you that yeah, you that discussed been, that where he could have so cool. gained the influence the Emperor, that? gotten the spy, <laughs> put it on Haga, <laughs> and then sent an agent there. Oh, that would have been... And I'm sure he was thinking about that when he, when he you know, sure. was talking yeah. to Rob about recalling yeah. the spy. Yeah. So he still has an agent. So presumably, he's likely to do that play and put a spy on wherever he's just going to send this last agent hey, so that he can me. gather intelligence with it. Kind of funny, because right now it looks like 
Well, it looks like I'm in the game, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm not in the game. I don't know where all these points are about to come from. <laughs> yeah, I get one in game. Yeah, I don't know what his last... He already has an agent at Arakeen, which would be a potential final play just to push one more troop and draw another card. I guess if he could play another agent to gather support, because Frank just recalled an agent from uh, gather support, that would be a point. Gather support? Oh, I'm sorry, I called to gather support. And deliver, deliver supplies, supplies. sure. But Frank changed his mind on that. Took a different agent. Yeah, he does. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of resources, does Jimmy, to be able to go to some of the more interesting spots like Imperial Privilege or shipping. Have we seen cargo shipping this game? I'm not sure that we have. I don't think so. I think Rob considered it and uh, chose not to. I think. Maybe Frank would have been the most likely person to have gone this game, sure, given how early money. and how early he shot up on the spacing guild. Sure, that's often yeah. a yeah, that's actually, often a path to an early swordmaster. Yeah, we didn't talk about that, oh, but that yeah. is a nice. Corinth yeah. City is a nice card to buy when you've unlocked an early uh, shipping. Yeah, yeah, he never he never went there. Okay, so he is going to shipping. There, oh, so move. he's just using shipping to get the influence, oh. and then he's going to be able to use... Oh, right. Does he have the spice, though? Oh, wait, so now he doesn't... Wait, no, he didn't. He doesn't have the spice for shipping. <laughs> did he? He <laughs> must have. He must have did got he exactly enough. To, did he do something to get the spice? Yeah. He, I swear he had... I mean, he could have had them stacked. It looked like he had two. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Yeah, it but he like could have had them stacked. Um, so, yeah, I mean... A, a super clean game, right? When you end the game oh, you get, with, with your resource piles so looking you like that, he's got zero water, zero spice, what? zero Solari right now. Well, I guess he went up to five with the play. Uh, Why did he... Wait, he had a Solari before, though, and now he... He used the Solari for the influence on the Emperor. No, he gained it with the... He used the shipping to gain the influence on the Emperor, didn't he? Nope. Oh, he used the Solari to go with the Emperor and then went shipping to get the to get other the one? influence on the Spacing Guild, so, so he, got, he got them he got both. both. Yeah. yeah. Incredible play. Now I think everybody realizes how much trouble they're in. Oh yeah. <laughs> Unless they have intrigues that can thwart this uh, conflict. He's, he has two alliances, neither of them are remotely threatened. But you'd need a lot of power in your intrigues to, to catch up to somebody who's at currently looks like 20, 25 or 26, 25. Yeah, he, somebody would need three influence bumps to threaten yeah. him on an alliance. I don't know. I think this might be all over but the crying. Yeah, it, it came together for him. That early Benny Jesser at Operative, I, I think, probably got him subtly ahead in this game. It was hard for the other players to detect how much value he was getting from it. I will say, I think Jimmy did slash does a good job of um, keeping the focus on the other players. Sure. Doing uh, which is e which is the thing that's uh, you know kind of easier to do the better the player you are because you know you don't need a lie you just kind of draw attention to the right things at the right times oh the guilds by all the worms and you're not saying things that are wrong but you're just sort of subtly reinforcing that other players are the thing to be focusing on and, and not you and then you just kind of sneak up from behind. Yeah, I asked him. Uh, online what he thought of the game and you know with his margo pick and he told me about how you know he thought margo is like a medium leader but he wouldn't make a mistake with margo and he said something like everything i said in the video is mostly true <laughs> it's probably related to what you're talking about yep just now. yep yeah shades, shades of truth um yeah so two players above 10 now that aren't who aren't jimmy but um Tough to see. They're going to need some real magic out of their uh, intrigue cards, be they combat or uh, end game, to yeah, it looks turn like this around. Is it. I bet there's going to be some uh, some handshakes coming soon. Let's just listen in on. Uh, okay. Let's store it. We got to store it. We got to store it. End games. I have North Corner. We're not there yet. Oh. Yeah. I'm done, George. Uh, so, one, two, three. Wow. 
Yeah. Not corner. Oh, it's not until after the yep. conflict is fully resolved. That the game happens. Yes. Uh, <laughs> then this this is uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you thought it was close. Ends at thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> Like a uh, snake in the grass. Was he? Did he come into that round at seven or eight? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it might have been seven. I think that might have been a six-point round for him. Wow! Incredible yeah. round for Jimmy. We don't get into incredible round. Incredible tournament. And, but look how close second place is here. Uh, they're tied. I guess. I guess the spice is the tiebreaker, and the spice is certainly not close. But sneaker having a giant horde of spice. Yeah, ultimately, Frank was able to convert all of his politics potential into points. And Sneaker was able to consistently get those Spice Must Flows down the line. They kind of both had the sort of steady drip. And Jimmy, just with a huge burst, jumped past them all. Wow, great game. Great tournament for Jimmy as well. Won all but one of his games. You know who beat Jimmy in the one game that he didn't win? I do know, but why don't you tell us? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I got thwarted in the semifinals, but at least I'll have that win over Jimmy. Who's, who's the real champion? <laughs> it's Jimmy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, great game, great tournament. Thanks to uh, everyone involved for uh, making this possible, helping us, helping us set this up, helping us run this event. Yeah, co-hosting this with uh, the Mr. Beast team was like super exciting. Kind of came out of nowhere. We had announced Uprising, and they reached out to us. Came together and they were so in fast. Like this. Yeah. this was not. It, I know it might seem like something that must have been long in the works. It came together in it felt like weeks. Um, really incredible. Seemed well, to be a pretty pretty big hit too. I mean, you know, based on what I was hearing around the room, everyone seemed to feedback, really yeah. really enjoy the game, really enjoy the the extra sort of depth and and wrinkles Uprising brings to the Dune Imperium experience. Well, thank you everybody for uh, watching along with us here, and uh, perhaps we'll have other uh, events like this in the future. It was fun casting this one. Yeah, this was this was a great time. Uh, thanks, and uh, have fun out there. See you on Arrakis. Bye. Guys, where's everybody else? Frank, sneak up there. Oh. Who's my, uh, yeah. Tom, you're training. Way to go. I didn't remember. I didn't remember. I didn't remember. I didn't remember. Good job. Woo! was small, but we made this. I'm gonna roll it over to the next time. So next yeah. prize is yeah. $20. Oh. Oh. I want to bring you guys to make the trip back, but I want to do this as soon as we can when you guys could actually come back. So I don't know if that's a couple months or, or what. This is basically what we do every week and we just play Dune. So it's yeah. nice to <laughs> do what we do just with other people. So <laughs> We just have to rent the hotel and I don't know if we'll figure fire. it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would run it back next week and obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What are you guys doing next week? Yeah. Well, maybe it's a playing dude, apparently. Yeah. Cool. That was fun. Thanks, Thank guys. you, everyone. Yeah. 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 I'm giving this to whoever wins next time now. Yeah. Yeah. I just saved trouble for the next tournament. <laughs>